the air is clearing the mist is disappearing from the fireworks before kickoff and it's Manchester United who get us underway attacking the North Stand playing from right to left in their familiar red jerseys white shorts and black socks Alvin in their home strip of blue and white stripes blue shorts and white socks out to the left touchline Darlow looks to get it forward early cut out by Dunk under pressure there from Fernandes but cleverly played by Gilmore back to Hinchelwood oh, and Hinchelwood back to Steele first instinct Billy Gilmore wanted to go back then he had, he had five yards of space to run into played a simple pass last week we saw Ether getting forward and, and, and driving forward didn't we and that's what I want to see from Gilmore today yeah uh, a lot of talk about his future whether he will be going to Napoli um, but uh, Albion seems to think he's staying so and certainly like Billy Gilmore well, the manager so we're underway and we can see the throw so it goes back to the Manchester United defence Kobe Maynou who had such a important role for England what Bass is doing John he's trying to cause problems for Veltman and uh, Van Heck he's going to play out as a number 10 he's playing out wide then he's not as a number 10 he goes out, out, out and out centre forward Darlow's playing very high up the pitch Fernandes Martinez sorry is getting wide on this left hand side we know that Albion play a high line so it's going to be tricky for them at times we'll have to see how Manchester United play that I think actually United aren't the sort of side that you want to play with this kind of thing but you have to be right at your best but certainly they'll take confidence from the performance last weekend same with the other winger Johnny as well Hammer he's gone inside it's like a, a 4-2-2-2 two, two, two formation yeah. I tell you who, uh, well, in the, Alana just playing out from the back the keeper gets it to Fernandez, whipping it out there he comes short there the Portuguese captain now linking up there with Ahmad across the pitch and Hecker is there steers it back to his keeper Fernandez goes to press Mount playing just in that 10 roll as well um, it reminds me of the lineup or good work by Hinchwood on the left touch side still inside his own half the Toma tried to flick it back to him but they've lost possession and United come again through the middle again there's a little slip there by uh, Milner and Van Hecker slight indecision and Steele comes forward to play it up the pitch towards Jan Kuba Minter who flicks it towards Welbeck played at quite a pace in the first couple of minutes yeah I was going to say do you remember Ralph, Ralph Harsenhurt or Southampton 4-2-2-2-2-2 two, 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 two. very similar to that with no real out now makes it difficult for defenders to know who they're marking yeah 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 and Brighton wouldn't have gone with this formation probably would they so you have to get the shape very quickly and realise that what formation they're playing strong challenge on Veltman but he's okay and the referee was playing advantage there but that, uh, when we have got the ball when we've got the ball Johnny it's important that our fullbacks Veltman gets forward and he has now he's played in Milner Milner out wide Minte on the run takes a touch does get the cross in there and scooped up by Anana at his near post I'm not sure whether he needed to take that extra touch there but he didn't really want to trust his right foot okay but once he's got the left foot on his left foot there Johnny I thought he'd, he'd just take it around him but Darla sold himself he's gone gone to ground hasn't he there yeah interesting battle in the wide areas I think this afternoon and that's where it's played by Manchester United to Darlow a right fullback playing on the left hand side into the middle to Maynou now to Fernandez. Fernandez just drifting across the pitch floated ball across there good run by Masrawi trying to join the join the de join the defense to attack linking up play now Fernandez swips it in first time out comes Steele good claim rolling it out quickly Milner wants someone to make a run there's absolutely no one for him to hit up the pitch and he's frustrated there James Milner but Johnny I understand is 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 upset but Danny Welbeck compared to Welbeck not defending yeah so can't yeah. it both ways and it is important defending that they have to do particularly in this Fabian Herzler side Beltman Van Hecker cross to the right won't find Minte Dano in too quickly saw that one early intense start to the game oh crack on the back of the head there for Bruno Fernandes but they've got advantage here comes Rashford from the left hand side drifting to the edge of the box pulls it back Casemiro Fernandes holding his head he's up on his feet few boos for him from the Seagull supporters four and a half minutes gone goal is here at the Amex chip ball over the top Fernandez gives chase and it's spin away off the slippy surface and out for a goal kick so nil nil here early goal for Queen's Park Rangers QPR leading Plymouth by a goal to nil at Loftus Road 
former Queen's Park Rangers and Albion striker in front of us today and Bobby Zamora I could name a few other clubs not probably quite as many as you Warren though I don't think close no but the, all these clubs were top clubs Johnny weren't they <laughs> not you played for some top clubs as no well. not disrespecting my clubs so no. he didn't go in the lower leagues did he like I did no. scored didn't some very to. important goals didn't he not just for the Albion Ball was moving there as they tried to take a quick free kick. So Craig Paulson's going to bring it back. Ten Hag annoyed there. Fabian Hertzler joining him on the sidelines. Got the big black puffer jacket. You need it certainly today. You wouldn't think that it's an August afternoon. Albion, who've won four out of the last five games against Manchester United, relishing this opportunity today. Van Hecker. Beltman being pushed back by Rashford. There's always an outlet back to the keeper. Steele has it. Takes it inside his six-yard box. Across to Dunk. He takes a touch. Could be dangerous. And then he goes back to the keeper, but it won't find him. And Van Hecker can't get to that one before it goes over the line. Out for a corner. A little bit sloppy at the back there. Well, I think Lewis Dunk's got caught in two minds there, hasn't he? But sometimes, you have, when they're high pressing like that, so you've got your two wingers, Rashford and Hamid, and Mount and Fernandez, all pressuring. You need to clear it sometimes. I thought the long ball over the top, mix it up a little bit, might be an option there because they were pressing, they did have players high up the uh, pitch. But the first corner of the game, and it comes to the visitors, Marco Knoop out there, the goalkeeping coach and uh, defensive analyst, set-piece specialist down there. And it's going to be Fernandez to take it from the left in front of the north stand goes back post and Hecker goes to meet it good solid header back to the near side Fernandez again cushions it to Ahmad Ahmad takes it away from Mitoma everybody behind the ball at the moment for the Seagulls Mizrawi turning it back there to Fernandez good pedigree Mizrawi going from Bayern Munich but part of the Ajax side side there from Manchester United on the right touchline but he was brought in for reasonable fee Moroccan international <coughs> no Luke Shaw at the moment for Manchester United but they do have a very strong bench today but goalless at the moment seven and a half minutes played here on BBC Radio Sussex and BBC Radio Surrey as the ball goes out of play from Dunk the long ball forward towards Matoma again skidding off the surface I'm just looking at that United back line then Ali Maguire was 10 yards beyond his other three defenders. He, he's, not, he's not asking questions about his pace. He's thinking, I'm going to drop off here. And Darlow and uh, Martinez were asking questions. And when you're driven so deep. Well, he doesn't like it, does he? No. Well, mistake there, and it's out for an Albion throw. Midway through the Manchester United half, down the Seagulls left. Well, he did used to do that, does he? Drops off because he's worried that he's going to get turned. But that could create a little bit of space in that 10 roll for likes of... Joao Pedro who I don't think has actually touched the ball yet well I don't think Joao Pedro's touched it I don't think Casemiro's touched it here's Veltman shoved to the ground there by Rashford in there goes Minte good work there from the winger trying to play it across the pitch flicked by Gilmore to get it to Dunk Dunk pushing Van Hecker back he's been busy he's got to watch out here he's can't go back to the keeper Mount it was who is pressing urging his team to get higher up the pitch and press inside the Albion half it goes out for a throw yeah, it's, a, it's an eye press isn't it that Beltman told to halt his run forward trying to creep towards halfway on the right such a dependable character well we talk about Pascal Gross but Joel Veltman 900,000 pounds unbelievable Inchwood coming off the left going to the center of the into the area to Van Hecker That's wearing the sparkly fluorescent pink boots as is Lewis Dunk someone's done a good job selling those into the players at the beginning of the season and now Van Hecker we heard there Jack Hinchwood talking about how important those two centre backs are for the Albion what a partnership they're building and it's Van Hecker who sends it long this time and Welbeck's chasing and Arna's come out of his area plays it to Darlow Darlow up the pitch but Milner's there found Welbeck Welbeck up against his former club of course now swings it to Pedro Pedro hits it left footed it's a tame effort it's dragged wide the first real shot of any intent from the Seagulls coming in the 10th minute but he goes out for a goal kick Milner -nil. there's good pressure from Brighton's front four there Milner intercepted greatly passes to Welbeck but 
I think Pedro has to do better there, doesn't he? I think the wrong decision. Shooting down his weaker foot, 25 yards out. When he had it's a great run from Inglewood, run inside him, and he could have just fed Matoma in. Well, we saw him stick it in the top oh. corner against uh, Spanish opposition here in a pre-season friendly, but uh, not to be on that occasion. Free kick there for Manchester United. Rashford does that very well, doesn't it? The, the ball comes into him, just nips it round, and then yeah, gives yeah. the free kick. But his, his first five yards is, is lightning quick, isn't it? And he yeah. just went away from Van Eck. They had no chance of Van Eck had to just put his body across and do, give the free kick away. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting battles out in the wide positions in the opening part of the game. Anana, keeper for Manchester United, to the near touchline. And Darlow's done well, he's headed it and got in behind Beltman. Only cross left footed, looking for the back post. Romy is Oh, he's just put it wide. Lovely, lovely work there from Dallow on this near side. Bent the ball across brilliantly to the far post. A well, bit of a let off that one. What he's done there brilliantly, Dallow. He's headed it forward into that space. Whipped her across. And he has to go with his head. He has to go with his head, Hamid. Edit it back across goal. It's a goal. He's gone with his left foot. His wrong foot is gone with anyway. So he's gone with his right foot. Big lead off from, for Bryson there. And two opportunities at uh, either end of the pitch and both opportunities going wide. I mentioned Johnny, our fullbacks today have to be very good, don't we? And there, just saw it one against one situations. And it's fullback against the fullback. And Darlow's won, the, won it hands down. Yeah, we would say the attacking players uh, probably having the better of it on both sides, really. So Darlow did very, very well indeed. 0-0 here at the Amex between Albion and Manchester United. Maguire sending it across there to his keeper, who's just perched outside of his box. Oh, no, the player's like a centre-half, doesn't it? Mm. Yeah, I think Ten Hag is really keen to get him more and more involved. Have that confidence. Prone to the odd error, as all keepers are at times. But uh, I think if you can put pressure on him, I don't think he's that great with his feet, but uh, he's found Rashford. He heads it forward on the angle. Shout of frustration there by Marcus Rashford. Well, he's, ask, he's asking Someone Marcus Rashford to bring it down. Well, straight to his head, isn't it? He can bring that down. Yeah. He's had to leap quite high, to mm. tie high to, um, to actually head it. But, uh, well. but at the moment, Johnny, our midfield two can't get on the ball. No. Milner, Gilmore, really struggling. Tramier leading Walsall by a goal to nil at Prenton Park. That's in another early kickoff elsewhere in the EFL today. As quick forward there by Pedro, finding Minte. Minte tries to get there, but good covering by Darlow. Arguably Manchester United's best player last season. And he's on the ball again now, receives it. Goes down by Milner. You get a few boos being an ex-Manchester City and Liverpool player. Albion with a free kick. Gilmore dragged to the ground there. Good play from Billy Gilmore, the pressure. Got his body between the man, Manu, and the ball. Manu had to bring him down. Would you like to see him stay, Billy Gilmore? Warren? Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. He does, like, I think he's a bit different. Like, he does like to get on the ball, doesn't he? And we saw sometimes in European games last season what he's capable of. <laughs> the lending up for 15 million would be a snip, Johnny, won't it? They're, go they're going right now. Yeah. But that's what I'm, I'm thinking. Not will he get a place in the side, but. 15 million. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens with Matt O'Reilly. Of course, you can always get the latest on uh, transfers on the BBC Sport website, a dedicated Brighton and Hove Albion page, as there is on BBC Sounds. If you want to go to that, you can get all Albion comment, all the audio to listen to, feature interviews as well. Do subscribe. Gives you a chance to be alerted as to when it arrives there, and you can be the first to listen to it. Here's Anana playing it short. Martinez under pressure. Milner goes in on Maynou, but Maynou manages to get it out wide. Poor touch by Darlo. Commentators kiss it. Death there, really. Now we have a throw. Minty takes it quickly. Milner goes towards the corner flag. First touch to keep it in play. Sticks it back to Veltman. Veltman finds Minty. Overran it slightly and lost possession and control. He played at quite a furious pace, this Warren, in the first quarter of an hour. Yeah, it is. Both sides very comfortable on the ball as well. Yeah, it's a good technical game. A um, couple of little minor errors, but that's about it as Rashford keeps it away there from. Van Hecker played into the middle, Mount scooping it up, he's found Ahmad, Ahmad's got Masrawi on the outside, Moroccan chases forward, then just stops, looks up, 
floating the ball towards the edge of the area away by Beltman first time left footed foul on Mitoma just knew it was coming there clever play by the Japanese international and he just took the blow and won the free kick what have you made of it so far Warren? great bit of skill there just going back to this little period of play done by Rashford two three Brighton players out there didn't he and they moved it quickly and Ahmed Masradi had, had space to against one situation then because Masuki his final pass was poor that they never got in but yeah I'm not seeing much of Pedro yet I don't Billy Gilmour to get it behind Fernandez and Mount not in front of them so it makes it easy for them too he's on the ball now and he's given it away Barlow to halfway left side five yards in is Rashford using Kobe Mainu Casemiro looks like he's been doing a little bit of work in the gym over the uh, summer warrant yeah it's a world class player isn't he I think he just himself go a little bit last last season and sometimes it's difficult mid-season isn't it because you are playing games as well as that ball was floated out for an Albion throw inside their own half you know sometimes you need that time don't you to just give yourself a bit of a recharge then work on certain things and give himself the best opportunity really because uh, I think he's not he's a centre half is he you know he's a classy player yeah. and actually when he first came to Manchester United he he did pretty well but uh, like it's a bit like Milner, Johnny, in the plays in around him and they didn't get isolated. Mm. And Gilmore got a little bit isolated and gave the ball away there. Maynard's onto it, into the box, left side, trying to drag it away from Van Hecker. And Tecker, he just put in a foot, deflected back to Steele. Tremendous work there by the Dutch defender. Yeah, we can't keep giving the ball away, Johnny. Yeah, and I think Billy passed. Gilmore's going too deep to receive the ball. Let Lewis Duncan and Van Heck do that. Bill Gilmore has to get beyond. Do you know what it feels like? Gilmore's playing slightly in the deserby way of coming so deep. Mm. Whereas actually, I think it's a little bit different under Hertzler. Congratulations to Jan Paul van Hecker, named in the provisional 35 man squad for the Netherlands. That's what Bill Gilmore's about. Ball forward there to Mince. That's a good delivery. Mince, right side of the box, drifting in now onto his left foot. Gone straight into Casemiro, who tackles him. Never really had an idea of what he was going to do, but he might have another chance here. Fed into the box, and then he's blasted the ball towards the far corner flag. Do you know what, Johnny? I think Welbeck and Pedro are going to get frustrated this season with <laughs> Winter. Well, I would be anyway, because there he's just a simple pass across, and then he's running into people. He doesn't need to, because he's in the box already, he doesn't need to take people on. No. Yeah. He gets into such great positions, just trying to find that little bit of finesse. Oh, it's decision making, really, isn't it? It's decision making in the right division, uh, right position yeah. at the right. Forget his 19, Johnny, isn't it? Yeah, so of course, of course. But what, what a pass! That's what we want Bill yeah. Gilmore to do. Yeah, get beyond more. the midfield players, then then spray it about. Here's Rashford trying to do the same across the pitch, but that's cut out there by Lewis Dunk after a deflection. Really good play by Van Hacker again. Always aware where his keeper is. Now Steele out to the right touchline. Beltman into the middle. Gilmore again. Allowed to just push on a little bit there. Fernandez coming towards him, but he's offloaded to Milner. Milner curling it. He's trying to get it in behind Darlow, but he took it on his chest, the defender, and then hooks it up the pitch to try and find Maynou, who does well to get it under control. Great technique. Uses Fernandez. Now Casemiro trying to send it into the channel, but it's too far for Rashford. Some of the build-up play from both sides, Warren, in this opening 80 minutes has been excellent. Yeah. I think whoever wins the midfield battle, Johnny, I think Casemiro, Manu, Billy Gilmore and, and Milner, I think will win this game today. Who gets on the ball, it takes it. Mm. It's 50-50 at the moment. Yes. I'm not seeing much of a tone rubbery down that. No. See Inch will come in no, off right. his line to try to receive the ball and spoke about that in his interview with you earlier. Not as much as Beltman. Mm, Beltman's on the ball now. Angles it into Welbeck, his first time ball. Asked a lot of Minte. And out comes Anana. Yeah. But it took a bit of time for Mitoma to get into the game against Everton. Because they had ten men for a lot of the second half. But uh, relatively quiet. Hasn't really had a chance to run at Mizrawi so far. Matthias De Ligt on the bench today for Manchester United, also signed from Bayern Munich via Ajax and Juventus. So, extra defensive cover for United. One of their defenders, Lissandro Martinez, in possession now. Left sided centre back, not the tallest, but he's good on the ball. Plays it back to his keeper. 
intensity has just dropped a little bit in the game which might be inevitable after the way it started in the first 20 minutes here's Maguire on his right foot hooking it up the line but it might go out of play and she would let it bounce and it did eventually well, Fabian Hertzler said that Jack Hinchwood can play anywhere and that's what you get with intelligent players I think there we saw the defensive lights at United three out of the four are ball players the foot Adam Maguire is not is he so I'd let Adam Maguire have the ball yeah, Lindelof at the moment for United as well as and Hecker waits for options not too much movement ahead of him a little yeah. bit static I think the Man United fans will be happy with Lindelof being injured if I'm really honest mm. Yeah, they're not uh, great fans, are they? Most of their cover on the bench is attacking with the likes of Gonacho, Anthony, Xerxi. Eriksson's in there as well. Good play by Welbeck. Chess it down to the right. Beltman into Pedro. One touch. Another to the edge of the area. Good covering tackle by Maynu. Just wanted a little bit too much time there. And then Matoma put in a good challenge on Fernandez. Out for a throw. And Albion's way, much to the annoyance of the United bench. Again, uh, Manu pulls the pitch, doesn't he? What a tackle that was. Pedro was sizing up the corner of the pitch and now trying to turn it infield to Welbeck. But misplaced pass and the red shirts are swarming in the middle. Now they get it out wide. Ahmad trying to take on Hincherwood. Hincherwood trying to show him on the inside. Ahmad still has it, squares it to Fernandez. He uses Manu. Again, good work by Welbeck and Pedro to get behind the ball. All players, all Brian players, work so hard that he's got 11, 11 players behind the ball. From him. Excellent work, defensively. I said he what? They're going to be tired on Saturday nights when they play under Fabian Hertzler. And Linte just went in there a little bit too early. Rashford got away. Well, well, I think Veltman handled that, scooping it up on the ground. He might be lucky to get away with a yellow card there. <laughs> Clever player, Veltman, though, wasn't he? He's on the ground, sliding down. His hand comes there. He tries to... Oh, yeah. It's quite a blatant handball, really. <laughs> <laughs> Scooped it up. He knew. A wry smile from Joel Veltman. But it was Minte's mistake initially. Yeah. It's a deadly area, Johnny, again. Yeah, five yards in from the left touch line. Adam Maguire's head and shoulders were height-wise, isn't it? Yeah. Duncan Van Hecker wants to try and attack it. Casemiro does well from, from this situation Yes, he well. does sometimes uh, can arrive late he's good in the air he's staying in an offside position at the moment now he's drifting back to the high Albion line which is on the edge of the D and Hecker pushing and shoving with Martinez there it's two bad. standing over it's got to be Fernandez. you would have thought I don't uh, know they don't know who's taking it Maguire's signal one's got one Fernandez has got the other arm off oh, Ahmad left footed across the face of goal and it is Casemiro but he heads it over the bar Van Hecker says he was like pushed down there and look what Casemiro was saying look he should be five, five yards forward he's, wrong, he's probably not wrong is he he's, he's not wrong but it would have been offside he's at no 13 yards out he wants it six yards out doesn't he yeah yeah because the, the you talk about eye, eye line defending Johnny he's got a big corridor of space to put it into there oh, well, I was certainly surprised that it wasn't taken by Bruno Fernandes as we they past the midway point of the first half here on BBC Radio Sussex and BBC Radio Surrey. Goalless at the moment. A couple of chances for either side, but neither hitting the target. Keepers haven't been that busy, really. Here's Gilmore. He's trying to get on the ball and get into the United half. Finds Milner. Right channel. Back to Gilmore. Scottish international did well there. Stuck under his feet initially, so now looks to recalibrate. Now gets it to Minte. Minte. Good run by Milner. Down the right, puts in the cross, deflected back, came off Martinez, and he's cleared. Out it goes for Manchester United throw, but how pleased we think Fabian Hertzler will be after the first quarter of the game? Yeah, I think he's grown into the game, Brighton, and, and get Billy Gilmore now is getting on the ball, Johnny. Important that, because he's, he is the, probably the, the deepest midfield player. Milner's just playing ahead of him, and he's picking some good positions up. Yeah. I just want to see Matoma get a bit more in the game and, and, and Pedro, those two, isolated on that side. I think we're, we're coming down this our right hand side, maybe a bit too much. Well, let's see if they mix it up. Here's Pedro towards the left is Matoma, who tries to get in behind Masrawi, but brilliant recovery work by the fullback at full stretch. 
timed it to perfection because Mitoma was chasing into that familiar left channel that he loves to get into on that occasion though the United defender came out on top and they build from deep Casemiro that little tuft of spiked black hair on his head he always wants to get the ball he's always talking the Brazilian on the ball again now in between the two centre backs lofting a high ball big appeal for offside there but uh, Fabian Hertzler certainly thought that that was offside but play continues well it depends if it's a score for it but I think you well, give it how long do you let it go though that's the point are we in a different pattern of play now well not because it's not going out has it over the top it goes Mount is forward and get ahead there of James Milner Mount rolls it inside Dallow back to Mount and the Chelsea midfielder reverse ball to Fernandez outside of the right boot comes off Feltman now it goes out for a corner all eyes on the far side to the referee's assistant Lewis Dunk say why did you not flag for it and it, it, it may have been offside Johnny but like you say you play to the whistle mm. and you went in day went on for so long yeah and what phase was it here's another phase of play it's going to come from the corner Bruno Fernandes to take it from the left hand side he rolled it to the edge of the box he's back to Fernandes again first initial touch then in with the cross flicked away by Van Hecker to get it towards the back post Albion appealing for something there but uh, again no flag you can't claim for offside and it's come off Lewis Dunk's head yeah Maguire stay forward causing a bit of a nuisance here's Dallow swinging shot it's dipping but not dipping enough for Manchester United and it'll be a goal kick it remains Brighton and Hove Albion nil Manchester United nil yeah you can claim as much as you want it's offside but it, it's it's come off uh, Lewis Dunk's head yeah I think that is the case and Dallow getting involved and an attacking threat there as a few Albion substitutes warm up Virginia Ruta is there, Carlos Beliva and uh, Adam Webster doing a few sprints on the sidelines here's Dunk, left it on the angle from D Pedro bumping into Mount Pedro again, going driving down the sidelines comes off Casemiro out for a throw, the two Brazilians shake hands <laughs> Panelled, I think he knocked the ball past him I think he was coming down anyway wasn't he? Yes, Pedro Yeah it's up to you I will take you down Hinchel would to take the throw then midway through the Albion half on that left side a bit tight in there he's going to have to offload it and now he does glancing headed by Welbeck trying to find Mitoma but Mizrawi is there first pause you can hear is for Simona Dingra tight Lamptey down the near side interesting to see Lamptey Igor and Ciso all on the uh, Albion subs bench today early run by Rashford whether he was offside but Ten Hag thought he was through well it's a great run but it's the poor pass from Casemiro Albion go long Minte trying to put pressure on Darlo. Darlo back to Anana. Anana, yard out from his goal line right footed long driven ball towards Ahmad feels a handball sliding in there is Gilmore free kick to the Albion again good work from Billy Gilmore 50-50 challenge wins it Mason Mount brings him down spot it move it now where he's dunk dunk on the ball on halfway just can't get Pedro or yeah. Matoma on the ball can we You'll probably notice how much movement and he was given that space against Everton oh Darlow in late there on Beltman again he knew it was coming but Minto was dispossessed initially what a battle that's been so far between Yankuba Minto and Diego Darlow free kick then 15 yards inside the Manchester United half to the right of centre Beltman takes it goes back to Van Hecker Hetzler urging Milner to get more central he's hugging his right side there is a little bit of space out there as Mitoma tries one of those dribbling runs took it too far Inchwood tries to help out Dunk as well but United on the break here the pace of Ahmed causing problems he's got three on two here looked like Rashford was offside big shout for offside but play continues referee's assistant 
poised on the far side, still going. Surely he's got to put his flag up eventually. Looked like Rashford was two yards offside. Martinez playing it in there. I think we've been let off there, Johnny. Not from the linesman. And there comes the flag. You know, when they broke through three against two there, Hamid, it's a poor pass from Fernandes. Mm. For Pat Fernandes or Rashford, anything in front of them, he's played it behind. Not helped them out at all. But Albion will take it. And now they can regroup, urged on by the Amex crowd. Towards halfway with Hinchelwood. Into the middle. Pedro allowed to turn now. Bit of space for him. Finds Milner. Milner outside the edge of the area. Just trying to flick it through to Welbeck, but uh, Maguire did enough. Danny Welbeck, of course, playing against his former club. Took too far there by Maynu. Here's Minte, edge of the D. Oh, just never really sure where he's going. Stuck under his feet. And there's Gilmore battling hard with Fernandez. A swipe there by Fernandez on Gilmore. Advantage played. I think Veltman with a little bit of retribution there on the Portuguese player. It wasn't nice from Fernandez on Gilmore either. Here's Pedro. It's like the last 20 minutes of the game, really. That's how it feels. Both teams trying to push. Albion particularly here. Veltman edging forward. Out to the right side. Pedro. Curling it in across the face of goal in this Hitchell couldn't get a touch. Bitoma, tightish angle, cross goal! Tapped in at close range by Danny Welbeck against his former club to open the scoring here at the Amex. And the Seagulls lead Manchester United by a goal to nil. Yes, great forward play, Johnny. You mentioned it there, thought it was the last 20 minutes. But it was putting pressure on this back four of United. Well, we've not spoken about him all game. Min uh, Matoma, he finds it to him right on the outside, on the left hand side. What he does, he puts a quick pass, catches a lot of defenders on the wall, and there's Danny Welbeck to slide in. 1 0. Well, right time, right place there from Danny Welbeck didn't have too much to do really did he but fantastic work scored in the last 15 Premier League seasons Warren incredible yeah the longevity now we have to do a bit of defending here though because Dallas on the attack Rashford up ahead into the middle swung across the pitch by Fernandez now Ahmed Mizrawi on the outside pieces it across goal but there's Lewis Dunk sliding to block comes back again this time it's a curling shot back post brilliant save by Steele double save oh. first with his left hand then with his right it's cracked over the line but there's an offside flag you've been asking well, for that offside flag all game Johnny <laughs> now it's come at the right time I'm probably yeah well yeah. It was a good ball to the back post. It was offside initially. The second opportunity. He's just pushed his left shoulder too far there, Rashford. Steele didn't know, though, did he? The first save is brilliant. Then he put out his right hand to try and claw it away. It crept over the line, just above his arm. But there was the flag to save Albion. Yeah, it's, it's offside. But you always say, Johnny, you're vulnerable when you're just scored. And there, weren't we? But it's a great interception, first of all, from Lewis Dunk. Yes. That's what they didn't do with the other end, United, with Maguire and Martinez. They didn't intercept. There, Lewis Dunk intercepted. OK, they had a second chance to put it back in. But they kept the line, they kept an eye line. They got well, him offside in the end. Well, they've had a warning. But they do lead by a goal to nil. Oh, Veltman's giving it away. Casemiro up to Mount. Mount trying to get it into the middle. Veltman, well positioned to get it to Dunk, who plays it back to his keeper. Well... The one word that Hertzler keeps using is intensity. Certainly been that in the opening 35 minutes here on BBC Radio Sussex and BBC Radio Surrey. Here's Gilmore. Sitting deep. Up there to Welbeck. Brought down by Martinez. Advantage played. Gets back up on his feet and Minter takes over from the right. Waiting for players to get into the middle. Goes on his own and it's saved by Onana. I'm sure whether it was a cross or a shot but good to see Mitoma getting in there towards the back post. But it's the right height for the goalkeeper, but if you can just get across the Johnny, across the goalkeeper, you've got a tap in, haven't you? But to Ferdin to keep up with Mint on this side there, uh, Welbeck would just be on and his 
Matoma on the other side trying to get in front of the goalkeeper. But well, again, good break from, from Brighton. Former well, Seagull striker Warren Aspel with us here on Saturday Sports. Albion 1 0 up in the lunchtime kickoff in the Premier League. I just feel if he could just fine tune his delivery, it could be devastating in the oh. Premier League this season, Jan Kuba Minter. Well, he's got everything, he's got all the attributes, Johnny, that's for sure, to be a, a, a superstar. Yeah, so many eyebrows raised when he made the switch. Some people questioning, I was chatting to a few people at lunchtime saying, why did Newcastle sell him? Maybe they had to. I don't think their manager was too pleased about the fact that he was leaving. But that response from United just showing what they're capable of, and they're on the attack again with Mount. Early cross, at the time is Van Hecker at full stretch. And that's really what the Albion defence is at the moment, at full stretch. Yeah, he just got caught. High up the pitch, Beltman, Bill Gilmore lost Mason Mount, and he's trying to put an early cross into Rashford to attack. But again, good defending, isn't it? Last, last ditch defending, but it's good defending. Another corner, third from this Manchester United left. And the third time it's going to be taken by Bruno Fernandes. Sends it towards the back post. Leaning out there is Billy Gilmore to just flick it away from Rashford who was lurking. I think the goalkeeping coach goes made up with that. Shaking his fist and... I don't know... Uh, uh, <laughs> it's a bit of a mismatch at the back stick though, isn't it? Well, uh, Rashford is... He's quite tall. He must be yeah. well over six foot, isn't he? Um, but, uh, here's Martinez. That's a chip ball to Fernandez, who's broke through the offside trap, pulls it back, edge of the box, shot there by uh, Mount, is spilled, and now the flag comes up from the referee's assistant on the far side. Yeah. Speak about it quite a lot, Johnny, about these uh, linesmen. Somebody could have dove in there, last touch def defending and hurt themselves. I think it needs to go up a little bit quicker. Yeah, that's a, that's a very good point you make about injuries. And that is a concern for um, managers and, and, and players alike when it when it continues just too much um, but uh, thankfully on that occasion no problems at all assistant referees Mark Perry and Nick Hobton today helping out Craig Paulson in the middle just eight minutes remaining of the first half Danny Welbeck's goal separating the two sides Steele from deep Decides to go long towards Mitoma, headed by Maguire, back into the Albion half, returned by Hinchwood. Nice square ball there by Milner. Now Gilmore down the line, off goes Mitoma. First time he's really got in behind on that left side. What can he do with it? Trying to take on Masrawi. Sends the cross long, but it's too long. Inte won't get to that one. And out for a throw. And then just United throw as well. Milner, Gilmore and Minte all felt that would have been deflected off a Man United player. Yeah, but it hasn't changed direction, has it, in, in, in the air, Johnny no. Martin? So, may, may a ton of little deflection, but yeah, yeah, nothing. I mean, for, for the rest of the on this side, it's quite a difficult call yeah. to make if the, if the contact's been made 50 yards away. Um, maybe the referee could have spotted it, but C4 Albion players complain, suggests that maybe there had been, but not given. Closing down there by Minte. See there, Maguire playing his defenders into trouble, Johnny. Maguire doesn't want the ball to his feet. Mm. The other three can, they can't handle the ball, but when Maguire gets it, he's played it behind Martinez down. They have to be retracted five yards. And they're down by the corner flag. They're telling Darlow, the Albion fans, to get back by the corner flag. Just edging forward. Throws it up there to Maynou. Tries to turn Gilmore, who fouls him in the process. Goes down. That's an incredible record, that, isn't it? Warren the uh, Welbeck scoring in every Premier season. League season, 15 consecutive. Well, uh, I said before, John, he's, he's in a mixed bear in the form. He got two out of two now in the league. Mm. What's that, five out of four? You, in, said, in, you, you said you won double, double figures. Double figures, yeah. Well, he's, on, <laughs> he's only done nine, hasn't he? He's got seven to go to get to his, his best, but I'm yeah. sure he can get to Let's 15, so. 20. Yeah. Well, he's working so well, he'll come back there, he's done really well and then unfortunately Milner slips as he passes and gives the ball away. Well, but will be frustrated. And got a bit of cramp, didn't he, at Goodison Park late on. Yeah, that's, how, that's how hard he was working. Well, wooden legs would come out, didn't they? <laughs> they did. But I think, you know, not having Europe and well, I don't expect him to start against Crawley on Tuesday night. No, I don't, I, I don't see many of these players playing against Crawley. Maybe on the bench, some of them, but... Yeah. 
played in behind there by Manchester United. Van Hecker took it away from Fernandes and nearly nicked in. It was close. Rashford with another chance to build. Gets it into the middle to Casemiro. Rashford's gone down hurt. Floated ball by Fernandes. Out comes Steele. Took it well ahead there of the arriving Ahmad. And play has been stopped because there's an injury to Marcus Rashford. It's his knee. Is it as he fell? No, I think he's fell. He's trying to get up quickly. I think he's must have felt something. I'm sure. But no, no, it's not the initial. Oh, he's caught him and stood on his stood on. Stood on him. It, yeah, maybe a bit too much protection from the those boots. Stockport County one, Bristol Rovers nil in the another early kickoff. A little bit more. Don't forget, we'll keep you posted on what's happening with Crawley and our non-league sides of course right throughout the afternoon and uh, the final whistle coming up after full time here around 2.30 and a chance to get your text tweets and uh, calls into us here on Saturday Sport um, Sussex struggling at uh, Scarborough 66 for 3 we'll get the latest from Adrian Harms there in the county championship here's Feltman out wide to Minty he's got space here can he attack Barlow into the box squares it blocks comes back again Minto goes trying to get the shot away he hit it with a bit more venom it might have been deflected but Manchester United regroup volleyed clear Inchwood's the final man heads it across the back line to Van Hecker ripple of applause there for Jack Hinchwood who's got his shin pads and socks a bit like Jack Grealish today just over the top of them halfway down his shins so I mean too, it's better to play for him. He got his head up, didn't he? Yes. Try to square it to Billy Gilmore as well. Billy Gilmore played the pass, but made his carry on running. Yes. His main name Gilmore though was getting to the box, and he, he, he did that quite well. Just the final pass from Minter didn't, didn't receive it. I certainly feel that Minty maybe will one of those players who might benefit from Hertzla and his coaching. He's found there by Pedro. Has it by the byline. Minty going onto his left foot, back onto his right. Yeah, he's not going to get through from Darlow there. No, so I mean, it's just a hard thing to catch it into play. <laughs> exactly. But the challenge by Van Hecker out for a throw. Just roll it back to Veltman to whip it in. I think he's just got so many things in his head. It seems yeah. like he's got four options. He's, he's thinking, I could go on the right, I could go on the left, I could pass it. I, I don't know. As I say, if he can get that decision making right, Albion could be in for a gem. Free kick on halfway as Menu is uh, fouled. Taken quickly by Rashford. Leaned into someone and Hinchwood's in there to take possession back for the Seagulls who look to push forward in the last couple of minutes of normal time in this first half. Leading by a goal to Lille if you're just joining us. Danny Welbeck, his second Premier League goal of the season. Tapping from close range after Kaoru Mitoma played it in from the left. Again, I put Minte in my side rather than Mitoma. I, I bought Mitoma, then I took him out, put Minte in, and now Mitoma's got another assist. Scored, of course, last week. Have you got him in your side? Yeah. Was as wonders and JC Milan battling it out in the Albion Unlimited podcast, Fantasy Football League. I'll give you an update in our next podcast. No podcast this week because Albion playing Crawley Tuesday night. It's live on the radio, of course, from 7 o'clock. Now Pedro getting back into midfield. Dunk goes long, looking to the right. Milner's underneath it, takes it on his chest. Uh, tried to play it on to Veltman, but made a bit of a hash of it, really. Maybe a little bit more time than he thought. Martinez, that space there. Albion pressing so high, even late in the half. Slipped there by Maynard, he went to the foul, but Albion could come forward here through Gilmore. Angle ball to the left, Pedro, 10 yards outside the box, feeding it in there. Wow. Lifted off that there to Hinshelwood, who tried to hook it back left-footed. And it just never got the connection for a cross. Taken by Anana, he throws it out, over onto the left-hand side. Maynard just skipping away from Minte, but Minte did well there to hold things up. Oh, he's done brilliantly there, that's for sure, he's used his pace. And not right to get there, they were yeah. really done his Johnny. Oh, I was a bit he's worried there for a moment as it was bowled out. Maynard getting on the ball now into more central position using Rashford back to Casemiro on halfway. Now Fernandez looking to the right, eases it across there to Ahmad. Ahmad attacking Hinchelwood to the edge of the box. 
Coming back there is Mitoma. Getting involved with the free kick. But we work there from both wingers. First Vinte, then Mitoma doing brilliantly. And now Mitoma just trying to G up the crowd a little bit. He wants maybe a more appreciation for his defensive work there. And quite rightly so. Yeah, he hit the spot on defensive work there. Didn't he? And what he's done with the Thomas grew in the grain, wasn't he? Both going forward and defend defending. Oh, excellent. I think it's been an excellent performance. Johnny, if I'm yeah. really honest. Slow starters against Everton, not the case today, they weren't. No. Mm, certainly don't feel that. I uh, feel comfortable, I, I, I think, Johnny. Would yeah, a couple of openings, I suppose. Yeah, but not many. But the, the referee, the linesman hasn't helped us, has he, on a couple of occasions? Yeah, I missed that. How many minutes were added on? One. Uh, one. Just the one, was it? Thank you, Warren. Looked down at my notes briefly at the wrong time. Since we're trying to defend over on the far left, United with players attacking the edge of the box, but Gilmore perched well, but then gives it away. Matoma comes to the rescue again as Maguire tried to get it into a dangerous position. You just heard the Tano I said one minute, Johnny. What, play, it, play it to the opposition's half there. Mm. Play it long into the opposition's half, into the corner. Well, there is the half time whistle. Albion leading by a goal to nil. Danny Welbeck in the 32nd minute. A simple tap in after Kaoru Mitoma crossed from the left hand side. Maybe could have had others. Yankuba Minter got into some good positions but couldn't find the right decision. Pedro with a wasteful shot from the edge of the area as well. It was nearly a quick response after the goal from United. Uh, that's for sure. But uh, Ahmad put it wide. And Rashford did get the ball into the back of the net, but the offside was given despite an excellent save by Jason Seal. So, 45 minutes gone, the Seagulls lead by a goal to nil. Yeah, I think we've grown into the game, I'm really honest, Shunny. Uh, I think the midfield, Billy Gilmore was going too deep on occasions, but when she stepped up and got in front of our, in, in front of Mason Mount, I think he's been, been very good, good range of passes. And you saw the, the brilliance of the trauma there, got his head up, one touch into the box. This side, Minta, he wants to run at the defence all the time, maybe he has to learn when to pass and when to cross. Uh, but yeah, all in all, I think we've been comfortable. In terms of second, they've got a lot of firepower on the bench, Manchester United, they're sure they would change if it remains like this, but what do you want to see first 15 minutes of the second period, War? I think the intensity has to be the same, Johnny, take the game to them as well. Uh, I press. Make them make the mistakes. Uh, so pressure's on them now to come out. Uh, we're winning. We're winning. Don't rush things uh, and, and see what it takes. But I, I think the substitutions have to play the part today. I think they will do. Uh, give it all because I like say, look at the bench now. It's strong. And so if, if Welbeck's tiring, it comes off. If Thomas tiring, come off and, and put the substitutions on. So yeah, work hard off the ball, which we have done brilliantly. The ball five mm, players have yeah. done excellent. We can set the tempo. Danny Welbeck, Pedro getting behind the ball, making it hard to them to break down. But I mean, as, as, as Jason still made a save, bar the offside. Yeah, he was offside, so he's not. Apart from that, he's just come for a couple of crosses. Yeah, so it, it's, it's comfortable. So let's see. But we need to trouble their goalkeeper as well. We, we mm. think he's not had a shot to save neither. No. So both goalkeepers have been let off really, especially this surface, it's damp good. surface, skidding. So yeah, I, I'd, I'd shoot. Pedro's had a shot, but it's way wide and too far out. Wrong decision. But I think if we can make the right decision in the final third, I think we we've got the right chance because I think Min Minter on this right hand side, he's had some good chances. To not just to take the man on, to, to get an early crossing. He doesn't need to beat the man, does he? And also, certainly Dala wants to get forward, so actually just pin him back and then he won't want to be keep defending. But yep, plenty of positives in that first 45 minutes here at the Amex opening home game of the Premier League season for the Seagulls. And at the break, they lead here by a goal to nil. Johnny Warren, thank you very much indeed. 20 past one. So far, so good for the Seagulls. Saturday Sports. Right side, Pedro curling it in across the face of goal. In this hit, Wood couldn't get a touch. Bitoma, tightish angle, cross goal. Tapped in at close range by Danny Welbeck against his former club to open the scoring here at the Amex, and the Seagulls lead Manchester United by a goal to nil. 
Don't forget, we want you to have your say after the match with myself and Warren in the final whistle. Don't ring just yet, but this will be how to get in contact. You can call us and talk to Warren on 0800 232 1046 or you can text and WhatsApp us. Text 81333, start your message with the word Surrey or you can WhatsApp us 08000 321 333 and again, start your message with the word Surrey. BBC Radio Surrey Talk to a couple of our featured three o'clock football matches to come. But first, let's drop in on the cricket, of course. Sussex and Surrey beginning this round of county matches, top of their respective divisions. Adrian Harms watching the leaders of Division 2, Sussex, up at Yorkshire. They're playing at Scarborough, Adrian, and, and it's been a difficult, difficult day so far. Well, a very difficult day for Sussex. Um, we've had some early morning rain, which is w- which has cleared away, and that's not going to play into Sussex's favour because they're in deep trouble here in the Yorkshire. It's 66 for three with Haynes, Hughes, and Clark already back in the pavilion. I have to say, a couple of poor shots as well from the Sussex players, really not helping their cause in terms of the match. Um, Tim at 66 for three, they're still trailing by 71 runs, and against a very strong Yorkshire attack, uh, Sussex have got to dig themselves out of a pretty deep hole here we've got the rest of day and tomorrow uh, the local forecast here tomorrow suggests there could be quite a bit of rain uh, which may save Sussex that being said they've got a lot of batting to do for the rest of the day if that's going to be uh, the case as you say Sussex the leaders of the uh, the second division they've only lost once in the division this season but they're going to have to bat really well to get themselves out of this meanwhile down at the Oval I'm afraid it's been raining uh, for much of the morning the weather forecast suggesting that might well clear uh, but at the moment no play down at the Oval where Lancashire are four without loss in their second innings still uh, with an uphill battle uh, 236 runs behind uh, Surrey in the test match though uh, Sri Lanka are really making a game of it 291 for six they are in their second innings that means they lead by 169 at Old Trafford there have been interruptions for rain um, but it looks like that one team could well go into a fifth day Adrian if we're going to be positive very quickly they have The tail has wagged, isn't it, this season? Sussex have had real depth. People really standing up on a number of occasions this season already. Yes, they have. I mean, I I think the difference is here, Tim, and this is something we've spoken about quite a lot this season, that this is a, for my money, it's a first division attack. And if Sussex are to get themselves into the first division, this is the quality uh, and strength of bowling you're going to face week in, week out. And I I have to say in this game that you'd question whether one or two of the Sussex batters... um, you know the shots they've played haven't been good there's been you know too many wickets given away um, through poor shots and it's something you just cannot afford to do at this level um, what I would say is there is you know in, in terms of batting to come Tom Allsop is still there he batted beautifully in the first innings for his 86 and he showed the type of determination application grit that you need to display on this sort of a pitch against this quality of bowling there's still John Simpson to come Finn Hudson Prentice and, and Jack Carson all of whom can bat but you feel out of these five batters and you're right someone seems to have dug Sussex out of trouble in pretty much every game this season and, and they're going to need that, Tim, because they're well behind. You'd think they'd need a lead of a couple of hundred if they're going to put Yorkshire under any sort of pressure in the second innings. At the moment, that seems quite a long way away. So it's an uphill struggle here for Sussex. But as you say, it presents an opportunity for some of these players to get their heads down and uh, see if they can battle Sussex back into this game. Adrian, wonderful stuff. Uh, you set it up beautifully. So if you want to hear that, absolutely fine. It's full live commentary on the BBC Sport website via the mobile app. What you can do is have us on BBC Sussex with Johnny and Warren with the Albion commentary. They're leading 1-0, by the way. And uh, just on your mobile app, your phone, your, your PC, have uh, Adrian and the team in the background as well. I do that quite a lot. It sends me a bit mad, but it's a great way of following two of our great Sussex sporting clubs. Uh, talking of which, Crawley remain unbeaten after their opening four matches of the new campaign. Uh, They head to Wigan in League One today as one of four teams who've won both their opening two league matches. They also, of course, through to Tuesday's mouth-watering League Cup second round tie away to the Albion at the MX. You can hear that right here on your local station in Sussex and Surrey. Uh, They played the under-21s last Tuesday in the opening round of the EFL Trophy. Uh, They drew two all but won the penalty shootout to get an extra point. After that game, John Barnett spoke to the former Charlton player Charlie Barker, one of the Reds' many summer signings after a spell down in non-league football but he's been given his first stop in that changed 11. There's a lot of fixtures coming up, so it's 
good for the boys to get minutes who haven't been. So if an opportunity comes around, they're fit and ready to just slot into the team seam- seamlessly. It's Wigan away on Saturday, a big, uh, a big. Well, it sounds like a massive one. I'm sure. What ten years ago, eleven years ago, they were winning the FA Cup. So uh, uh, certainly a, a club with a, with a bit of history. Yeah, there's some huge clubs in this league, but you can't look at it like that. You got to try and look at every, every game as how we're going to get three points out of this. It's yeah, we know there's big clubs with big histories in this league, but. I think there's ways that the manager will try and set us up to win the game. If you personally, good to be playing back in the Football League as well, obviously with Charlton as a youngster, played non-league, and but good for you to be back in the Football League. Yeah, really happy to be back in the Football League. Um, enjoyed my time in non-league, I learnt a lot, it's given me a good platform to show what I can do, and then it's given me the opportunity to come back here and try and keep progressing. And of course you have a link with the club, with uh, of course with your father previously being the, the manager at Crawley, was, was, that, was that quite special when you, when you got the opportunity to come here yeah. with that history? Yeah, when I got the call, I was I was with my dad, and then we had a, did have a laugh about it, and then yeah, it was a really good opportunity for me to come here, and yeah, I never thought we would end up well at the same club, not obviously not at the same time, but it is nice. He he had a really good time. He enjoyed his time. He only has positive things to say about it, so it always helps. And what hopes do you have for the season? I'd say playing back in the football league, and you hope to establish yourself as a first team regular. Having seen a lot of players do that last year with Crawley. Yeah, obviously the boys done really well last year. Obviously got promoted. A lot of the boys got moves away, deservedly. So yeah, hopefully you can just get an opportunity, get as many minutes as I can, and then see what happens from there. Well, that is Charlie uh, Charlie Barker who scored for Crawley on Tuesday. It was a night of a couple of Charlies. Charlie Kendall scoring for Woking. Let's drop into National League and uh, say a very good afternoon to uh, Tom Mitchell, who's at Ebbsfleet this afternoon. Woking, of course, two defeats at the start of their season. An awful challenge and uh, a sending off for their skipper. They had to regroup Tuesday night and they did. They won against Dagenham and Redbridge. Today they're on the road at Ebbsfleet and they really needed that win, didn't they, Tom Mitchell, the cards? Almost certainly. It was a really <laughs> hard-fought victory and the defence were excellent and that, that gave a real platform for Woking to, to push forward and get that late winner again. Matt Ward, um, Charlie Kendall off the bench and those two sides proved vital. Matt Ward burst through the middle, gave it off to Charlie Kendall, smashed it into the roof of net and he certainly enjoyed that winner uh, running towards the fans. It gets Woking off the mark and Ebsleet themselves will be looking to get off the mark as well this afternoon. They've lost their first three games, the latest of those trio of opening defeats coming in a five-goal thriller at Yeovil. And this is the first of the, the Bank Holiday weekend fixtures with Hartlepool to come on Monday. Darren Sahl turning to Woken. I think Michael Daw will be hoping now if he can get some points from these fixtures this weekend that will set up a much more positive campaign uh, this time round as this team starts to gel even more. And to be fair to him I mean he said it to you after the first match you know I've had 10-11 new faces it's going to take time and he said to you after the win on Tuesday about Kean Harris starting to settle in and, and if he can be defensively strong he's brilliant going forward his vision you know he's doing it for Aldershot last season of course in the cup and, and, and in the league. Oh, he's absolutely excellent on, on Tuesday. But I have to say as well, Timmy Odessina and Max Dyche yes. alongside him in that bat line, that's a real good, solid base for, for Woking going forwards. I think now Michael Dorby open that Dan Moss and Jacob Jones, the wing backs, they need to provide that width and put the crosses in. They can do that even more. But I feel that the midfield was really settled. Tanji Akinola thought had an excellent performance. And again, now with Charlie Kendall off the back of that winning goal, he'll be hungry to get some more goals. And I wouldn't be surprised if he gets the nod up front this afternoon. And the mighty Ian Nicholson alongside you today? Yes, he is. He's at the ground, but I think he's just getting some re- refreshments at the moment. So, uh, awful conditions, but let's hope that uh, things will be brightened up by a, a real top woken performance here at the Cufflink Stadium. Well, Tom, a massive thank you for getting there early for us, building up what is a huge game for the cards at uh, both our sides. Aldershot Town, of course, in action as well. They welcome Oldham. Oldham, formerly the Premier League, aren't they? Uh, one win, one draw, one defeat for the shots. The defeat coming on Tuesday. They led at Braintree, but lost 2-1. The boss, Tommy Richardson, not too concerned, though, certainly with the attacking intent of the shots. I mean, we've scored in all three games we've played, so in my opinion, it's the structure behind the goal scorers that we've got to be better at because we've got to stop the ball getting in our goal and it's something that you know we knew we had to address at the end of last season I think we have I think we've got lads in in here who are a little more sturdy and a little bit more defensive minded but they haven't got to get carried away with the media and the social media these days it does my nutting to be honest with you there's too many people patting too many people on backs at the minute we're three games into a season you know they shouldn't be a league table put together yet in my opinion we just need to get on concentrate on the next game and that's it so looking ahead to Oldham at the weekend what kind of showing do you want from your players what kind of reaction would you like 
Um, I don't think it's a, it's a case of that. I think it's, you know, we'll prepare. We'll have had all and watched at least on one occasion. So, you know, we'll have a plan to, to go at them at our place on, on Saturday. It doesn't matter who we play. We prepare the same way. We'll do our due diligence on them. I'm sure they will on us. But, you know, they're, they're a massive club in this division and we don't expect any easy games. Tuesday night showed you that. So, you know, we've got to be at our best to be competitive in this, at this level and uh, it's up to me and, and my staff to make sure we are exactly that. The voice of the Aldershot boss, Tommy Richardson. So both games, Aldershot, Oldham and Ebsfleet working live on your BBC Sport website and mobile app. We'll plug the link for you on our social medias at BBC Surrey Sport in the next oh, half hour or so to hour and kick off at three. We'll drop in on those sides at half two and then from after the final whistle when we're discussing the Albion match, which by the way, so far so good. They lead Man United by one goal to nil. Danny Welbeck with two wins, two goals and two in the Premier League, five in four matches this season including the pre-season so, so far United in trouble Man United Brighton of Albion leading by a goal to nil If you're looking for laughs That should be a laugh BBC iPlayer's got you covered and I suppose you think that's funny do you? I do I absolutely do <laughs> With over 3,000 episodes of comedy favourites I was told to start with a joke I like this <laughs> Including My Family Citizen Khan Ghosts and many more <laughs> I'm so amused right now. People will love it. Bring on the laughs. Are you laughing? Watch on BBC iPlayer. We've given you the cricket scores with Adrian Arms. United, uh, uh, sorry, Brighton leading United by a goal to nil. We're back there as soon as the players are out. Uh, National League South intriguing today. Spencer Day's Farnborough FC have gone to Welling looking for what would be a fourth win in a row after beating Eastbourne Borough, of course, midweek. Here is Spencer. We're going to enjoy it. You know, uh, we're, we're always trying to overachieve here and if we're top of the league for five minutes, then we'll enjoy every minute of it and uh, no one's going to take that away from us. Because people look at the... The, the, the sort of runners and riders and they pick out what one might call the big clubs and they sort of only half notice Farnborough don't they and there you are you can be anywhere on your day yeah the problem now is is people wouldn't realise that but um, yeah we, 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 we've been the form side in the division since February uh, we only just missed off the playoffs we, we were desperate to get in there because I think we would have caused teams a lot of problems but that we're just enjoying ourselves at the moment um, you know if you'd said to me we'd beat Torquay and, and Eastbourne, two full-time sides, and, and away at chipping them up, I would have said, you're, you're nuts, and we've gone and got nine points. So, um, yeah, absolutely delighted for everyone involved. Well, good luck to Farnborough today. They are away. To, they're off at Welling. Worthing have gone to Hemel and Eastbourne Borough. Welcome Avely. We'll hear from Kevin at half-time in our three o'clock games. But back to the second half of our 12.30, where Brighton and Nova Albion lead Manchester United by a goal to nil. Warren Aspel alongside Johnny Cantor doesn't look like any changes at uh, the break for either side but I'm thinking that that is Joshua Xerxes who is about to come on for Manchester United so Mason Monk done off I'm just trying to see but yeah, uh, is. all the work was done before and now being attacking the North Stand leading by a goal to nil forward comes Pedro good run comes back for Milner could take a shot from here he does and it's off target Great opportunity in the first 20 seconds of the second half. Brilliant run by Pedro. Milner had the opportunity to shoot, couldn't hit the target. Yeah, we spoke about it before the half time, didn't not, not making a goalkeeper work, and now on another occasion, they, they try to bend it in the top corner. So you think it'd be, it'd be better, better than that. You need to make the goalkeeper make a save, especially in this weather. So Xerxes on for Mount. It looks like he is going to play in that sort of false roll Ahmad either side and Rashford on the left Ahmad on the right Anana steps forward right footed launching it long off goes Rashford intercepted header by Van Hecker he started well Xerxes immediately applying a bit of pressure to the man in possession and the ball goes out for a, a throw like, to make the defending easier I think for Van Hecker and Dunk because they know they've got a man to mark now where first half they didn't know who was playing centre because Rashford will come on off the line then Mount and Fernandez will push further up so but now they've got an out and out centre forward to mark there is Xerxes who scored on his debut coming on as a substitute against uh, Fulham week last Friday so if you're just joining us it's Danny Welbeck's goal that separates the two sides 
Probably half an hour into that first half. See both fullbacks from Man United go inside, don't they, Johnny? So it takes us a space if we break quickly. Yeah, especially with the lack of pace of uh, Harry Maguire. Mistake on the left there by United. And now we will have a, a throw. You wanted intensity. That's what uh, I'm sure Fabian Hertzler will be looking for in the uh, second half as well. Some people I spoke to felt that Albion were a little bit lucky to be leading at the break, but uh, I think for all Man United's neat interplay and build-up, really have that many chances. I think, if you, if you think about it, Johnny, not many chances in that first half, but what Lewis Duncan Van Heck did when the crosses came in, they cut them out. Yeah. First cross we put in, Fernandez and Maguire, they don't cut it out, and the well, it's got a tap in. Yeah, playing it out from deep here, yeah. United using Casemiro and then Maynou. Just likes to patrol in front of the map for Casemiro. Doesn't want to drift too far forward generally. And if he does, it takes a little bit of time for him to get there. But, uh, Mount off and Zerkzee on. A bit more presence up front for United. Maybe looking to cut off the supply. That's the the key for them but no and onto his left foot this time to the touch right onto the chest of Dallo Dallo brought down by Milner who was never going to let him get away there great bit of skill from Dallo isn't it been ve very impressed with him Johnny playing out of position on that left hand side he's yeah. going to have a job now to keep keep his place on the right hand side isn't he Dallo with his this new player the yeah Mizrahi's looked excellent isn't he mm. and certainly uh, kept Kauri Mitoma relatively quiet Oh, we have to let him go into the there. there. It was Ahmad who was getting forward. Looked like he was holding on to the Manchester United player, but Hinchwood has recovered and forced him back. You don't need to go running with him, Johnny. Let him run offside. Yeah. The eye line's there. Don't need to run back in with him. If you, once you run back in there with him, you, all the other three defenders have to go back as well, five yards. Here is Mazraoui. Ahmad on the touchline. Forward comes Maguire. Away from Gilmore. Masraoui again, good tackle by Welbeck, lauded by his manager, you can see Fabian Hurts and pleased with the work that's done there, they're trying to play the throw high up the pitch. And certainly an interesting build up in the middle, and Azimir has made a run right over the top there, the floater ball towards it bounces off the surface. Well, you mentioned it's going to be tricky for the keepers. The rain continues to come down here at the Amex as Milner fires it forward. Scooped up by Minte, three in the middle. Minte still going on the outside, tries to get the cross in. Blocked by Darlo out for a corner. That's better, isn't it? It's direct there, but he's got 25 yards up to run at Darlo. He's took him on the outside. What he's done, he's won as a corner. It's a bit like the goal at Everton running from slightly deeper coming in field but then darting down the line to try and get the cross in but Darlow's defended better than the Toffees do what I'm saying these two fullbacks probably head and shoulders above the two fullbacks what Everton playing play and they've got more pace first corner for the Albion Milner's going to take it but on the winning side 11 times out of his 35 games against Manchester United trying to become provider comes off the top there of uh, Van Hecker's uh, head in there goes Minte tries to hook it back in Itoma scrapping with Xerxi Albion win it back left side of the box Xerxi strong challenge gets it away he's a powerful unit Gilmore coming down the near side hooked away only as far as Hinshelwood he slides it back to Lewis Dunk for the Seagulls oh, so it was a bright start to the first half the second period has been pretty similar actually as, uh, Van Hecker now goes all the way back to Steele Fernandez wants to Press, steal, onto his left foot, driving it low into Welbeck, lay off to Pedro, Pedro still going, driving through the middle of the pitch, three players with him, still going, finds Milner, he takes a touch, shoots, and it's cleared off the line. That man Darlow again, just didn't quite get enough of the contact, one back by Pedro, barely says the referee, Albion go again. Pushing for a second, well back into the box, but uh, out and away there by Harry Maguire. Out for a throw. Great Albion play. thought they'd got a second, but you've got to give Darlow credit. <laughs> Darlow credit. But it's a great run from Milner, isn't it? In between the two centre-backs. <laughs> but what they're saying, Fernandez is complaining. 
took one in the mouth, but he's falling down when he took it. But Pedro drove forward. It's, it's, it's his little pass, Johnny. I thought he was going to play it wide, but he played it in between the two defenders for Milner. He's done everything right, but with no pace on it. Gets cleared off the line. Still 1 0 to the Seagulls. And James Milner has had two chances one from the edge of the box and one there to double the Seagulls' lead. But Matoma coming from the left. Owen with a spring in their step. Hinchwood getting forward down the left hand side. Beyond Mitoma, really, for the first time in this second half, which is six minutes old here on Saturday Sport. Gilmore back to Van Hecker. Little short pass to Beltman. Nice triangle. Gilmore again back heel this time by Milner. Felt that Pedro was going to run forward, but he hadn't. And Anana will come forward and scoop it up. <laughs> He's unlucky there, Milner. Johnny. Probably needs a little a bit of a breather, but <laughs> you know how fit he is. Yeah. It's good to see him driving run, getting oh. beyond, isn't it? That central area, very interesting D with Gilmore coming in for the injured Vifa. And what now they're doing, Johnny? Fernandez. He's not playing as a midfield player, he's playing as a number 10 now, isn't it, more or less? And so Casemiro. Probably more or less on the own. So Bill Gilmore's pushing pushing high with the pitch as well, as as well as Milner. Yeah, it could become uh, more of an uh, attacking threat if he needs to be. I think Pedro's playing a little bit further forward as well, really. He was maybe in that first half. He's the highest man now. Going to link up with Welbeck. He scored the only goal of the game so far as Maguire goes long to try and find Rashford. Headed by Feltman, but Xerxes going to rush onto the second ball. Drags it back. Chance there for Fernandez. Comes off his knee into the deflection. And he took all the speed and power out of it, so it's comfortable for Steele in the end. Things are let off there, Johnny. I think the break's a good ball back. Fernandez's his first touch. He didn't want it to bounce up. That's for sure. He's just bounced off his knees and safely into Steele's hands. Yeah, it's kind of been very, very different. It hadn't gone that high. He would have been able to get the shot away. It was in a very good position. That wasn't a great clearance by Steele. Rashford edge of the box. Turns it infield. Allowed to bounce there by Lewis Dunk. Who heads it back to Steele, who just gets there before the arriving Rashford. No, no panic, Lewis. <laughs> Yeah, so laid back, isn't he? He's now on the ball, trying to turn defence into attack now, and he's got options out wide if he wants them. Hinchelwood looking on the angle, ball into Welbeck. Welbeck thought about feeding Mitoma, changed his mind, goes back to Hinchelwood. He lost it high. Minte out there on the far side. Header from Darlow might have come off the Albion player, but Minte's pace will help keep it in. Goes to the far side to retrieve it. Now he decides to roll it back there for Veltman. Gilmore back out wide. Minte attacking him with his left foot, curls it in there. Welbeck with a header straight to the keeper. Good chance though. Better from Minte though, Johnny. Better build up from him. And no space to take the full back on, so he just rolled it back. I thought the, the ball back to Veltman was a bit too hard for him to cross first time. So he goes back into Gilmore. Gilmore passes it back home to Minte. Then comes in the side, one touch, fin one touch cross, finds Welbeck. 10 yards, 15 yards out. Never going to score from there. No. No pace on the ball. Fernandez out wide, trying to curl it in with the outside of his right boot. Shake of the head there from Fabian Hertzler. Had a quick chat with his backroom staff. Congratulations to Andrew Crofts, who became assistant head coach this week and also got a job with Wales. So, not a bad week for the former Albion midfielder. Gave it away there down the near side. Ahmad attacking Lewis Dunn. And here's Casemiro sending it in beyond left there by Rashford but now he's going on to the ball in there shoots from an angle it's wide I think he knew he was going to be offside anyway and the flag now is confirmed that that was the case ah now this eye line from Brighton is paying dividends Johnny mm. right all the teams we've played so far in Everton last week where they kept running offside and today it's not just you've got Rashford you've got Hamed people Fernandez running, off, running offside you have to use a bit of net savvy, don't you? Sometimes mm. run from deep. Exactly. I mean, De Cure, if he timed his run better, you know, would have been a few. few He's time and egg. I, I suppose the only the, the only thing you would say is that people will latch onto this, yes. and that is a concern for the future, I guess. Well, you think Fernandez would be a bit better lying deep mm. to make the forward runs, but then sometimes the ball doesn't come along and he gets frustrated, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. Here's Lewis Dunk trying to seek out Matoma. Matoma oh, with a good is. run. Well found there by his captain. Down towards the byline. 
Rolls it back to Pedro. Pedro left side of the box. Up against Casemiro. Brazilian versus Brazilian here. Pedro wanting to invite in the challenge. He likes to go back to Gilmore. What a ball from Lewis down to find Mitoni. Loves that one just in behind on the left. This time it goes down the left channel. Milner there just getting ahead of Ahmad. Dragged back there with the shirt by Ahmad. It's a brilliant run again from Milner, Johnny. Whatever you say, energy levels from, from the 38 year old there. Running in behind, causing problems. One is a free kick in a dangerous area. Yeah. I think he wanted to continue as well because it had hold of his shirt, was dragging him back, but he still felt he might be able to get the cross in. I'll tell you what, John, I wouldn't like to play him played against him when he was 22, 23, 24 Milner. He never stops running. Well, it's a free kick. No yellow card, we yet to have one in the game. Well, I think it's good referee, though, John. Yeah, yeah, I'm I agree. It's he set his standard out. Yeah. There's no hard challenges. Not, wasn't been any malice so far no. in the game, has it? But here's the free kick, half a yard from the byline, left side of the box, outside the area. Minte, left footed, curling it in there, yes. leaning in, oh it's hit the top of the crossbar. Back in by Mitoma, big leap by Maguire to get it clear. Welbeck tries to bring it down and force another opportunity but it's hacked away for a throw on the far side. Danny Welbeck, Danny Welbeck leaping high in the six yard area, glancing towards the far post. And it came off the top of the crossbar. Mm. Good header as well, Johnny. Gone, gone away from goal, wasn't he, Danny? Yeah. I think Lewis Dunk would have been probably upset. He's running on to it. Uh, just flashbacks of that goal that he scored, the header against Chelsea. Chelsea late on, yeah. Late on, late yeah, on yeah. yeah. It was a similar sort of thing, wasn't it? Craning the neck to try and get there. And uh, didn't quite get his second opportunity, but just feel Ambien maybe need to take advantage of some of these chances that they're creating in this second half so far still 1-0 forward it goes Minter in behind but their keeper has come and will get there first at the top of the head of Barlow I thought he was going to play him in there yeah with the header yeah, yeah. took a bit of steam off it didn't it back it goes to Inanna Minter closing down he's full of energy full of beans offloaded there by Inanna to Mizrawi now Ahmad, it's a very open game, it's a bit like a cup tie really. Here's Maguire into the middle, Kobe Mainu. Gilmore trying to get close. Nearly 15 minutes play, conversations may be had soon about potential changes from either side as Mizrawi plays it in behind Hinshelwood, Ahmad's got to it, into the box, jinx onto his left side, shoots and it's deflected off the Albion defenders, past Jason Steele and Manchester United equalise in the 15 minute of the second half 1-1 one, one. Well, I said I said Johnny the high line and there's Tannis one perfect I don't know his Tannis one I've not seen the replay yet but if he has it's a brilliant run beyond Mitchell Wood we have to wait and see I think he may be up I don't know. Well, it's tight, tight isn't it? Yeah, it is tight. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, Ahmad it was who came in off the right flank onto his left foot. Hinshelwood showing him on the inside initially. But as he shot, two Albion defenders at full stretch. I think it comes off Van Hecker in the end. We'll wait and see if there is a check. The players are returning back to the near side. Very, 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 very tight though. Well, everyone's getting back into position, but uh, Craig Pawson is the most important man. He's not. He's just waiting. There is a check. He's offside with Inchelwood. I don't know with Van Heck, though. I think he's in front of Inchelwood. I don't know about Van Heck. See? It's going to be quite a quick decision, I think, though. I think Van Heck is playing them onside. Well, we'll have to wait and see. Confirmation that there is a, a check ongoing. Our VA official is Chris goal. Kavanagh. Yeah, I think Van Hex played him on side. Yeah. Uh, Not Inchelwood, there's it? offside Inchelwood. Yeah. With Inchelwood, Van Hex run in there. Goal stands, 1-1. One, one. Well, we were just saying, weren't we, that they were creating those chances, hit the post. Yeah. Sorry, crossbar rather. And then just paid for it, and now it's the Manchester United fans who are chanting and cheering. Still a long way to go. 
half an hour left well in this fixture Johnny there's been no draws has there <laughs> no there hasn't that's right which is quite incredible really 14 occasions that they have played each other former and Mr Roy coming forward to have a word with the manager there that might have gone wide that shot as well Johnny I'm not too sure it was going in made it hit the post it's Lewis it's gone through Lewis dunks legs yeah. yeah maybe they would have wished that it hadn't have hit the yeah, Paul Van Pecker but uh, unfortunate all the same but we'll, I think the goal has been given to our man who's off the pitch now and he's coming back on trying to get forward Gilmore does really well great tackle came on across there to help out and he's back in the left back position now the Scottish international well, United are going to make the first change it would appear as Pedro gets on the ball now taking it away from Martinez drag back Casemiro thumps the ball into the advertising hoardings in front of us just get Pedro in at this defence Johnny mm. once he gets the ball and runs at him he's causes problems so Garnacho is coming on United made the change at the break with Xerxes replacing Mount he was taking off I think Hamid's a good Hamid's second half I was going to say if he, after these last five minutes he'll be a little bit disappointed but uh, we'll have to wait and see as Gilmore tries the diagonal ball to Minte won by Manchester United it goes to Anana who's just trying to calm things down slow it down now that Manchester United have got themselves back in the game Fernandez working it to the left Darlow roaming forward now played in on the angle Rashford trying to get behind Van Hecker but the Dutchman's done well spins needs a bit of help over there by the corner flag though turned into a bit of corner but good work there by JP as he's known by his teammates and that allows the change and it's going to be Rashford, Rashford. to come off do you feel that maybe Rashford should have left Manchester United at some stage for him? I know it's difficult I think it's difficult yeah we need a new challenge I think I think this manager's well this manager you have to work socks off Johnny I think he, he does when he does work it, it, you feel going forward he's not effective and he's getting a standing ovation from the United supporters in the south stand behind that goal well, like this manager's not scared of taking off the big stars on is he no he's had to deal with a fair few hasn't well, he you think Mason Mount dragged off at half time I don't know if he was injured or not but come and sit with me and now Rashford after 65 minutes have been thinking about changes one because Pedro's coming to the coming to the game now Johnny I don't know yeah, could you push Pedro further up and bring on NC so maybe or such uh, a midfield area you've got Gilmore and Milner Matoma and Minte there's Fernandez trying to get on the ball and get away from Gilmore free kick now by the yeah, Albion midfielder a little bit bitty a little bit untidy and that's probably helped Manchester United yeah this is I think a bit of fatigue's coming in, involved now, isn't that? That's why I was thinking yeah. changes, maybe. I'm thinking maybe even Belieber or someone like that in the midfield, maybe, or Ayari. But, uh, and Gilmore hasn't had much game time in the early part of pre-season. That's what the Euros, of course. Here's Garnacho. Little square ball. Casemiro. Let's fly. And it's over the top of the bar once again. Goal kick. Still 1-1 one -one here at the Amex on BBC Radio Sussex the BBC Radio Surrey yeah they're the most likely to score another one Johnny don't they yeah. what do you think the substitutes yeah, there are different types of options Simona Dinger is there as well came on uh, at half time at Goodison Park and there's uh, Van Hecker is out there on the right trying to find Gil, uh, Milmore, Milner, Milner into Minte, Minte up to Welbeck, he steers it into Pedro, Pedro takes it away from Ahmad who turned him inside which is a good ball but here's Hitcherwood joining the attack, edge of the D, 
out to Mitoma. Probably might shoot there, but Mitoma's got it. Left corner of the box, goes on the outside of Mazraoui. Doesn't cross, rolls it back, Hinchwood available again. Squares it to Pedro. Congested, but it's dinked over the top. Hinchwood continues the run. Going there with Maguire, who manages to out-muscle him and get it up there to Xerxes. Xerxes trying to play it to Ahmad. Out of play. I love the old look of disbelief by Xerxes, as if to say, what was going on there? Well, you played it four yards in front of him. That's what <laughs> happened. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. you made a bad pass. You're like, oh, for God's sake. In front of the I think we've all, manager I well. think we've all probably done it, haven't we? To a lesser or greater degree or level. But uh, Brighton and Hove Albion 1, Manchester United 1. Lunchtime kickoff for you on Saturday Sport today. As there is next weekend, we're away at Arsenal to join us for midday. Before that, of course, it's Albion against Crawley in the League Cup second round. Tuesday night, 7.45 kickoff. We're live from 7. Mitoma. Back now to Dunk. Dunk linking up with Gilmore this time. Back to Van Hecker. Tried to squeeze it in. It was all a bit tight. Just trying to force it a little bit from the back. Here's Garnacho. Fresh legs. Fresh legs. He's not as quick as Rashford or Hamed, is he? Garnacho. Carries the ball very well. And he's a good finisher for me yeah. as well. Um, he's on the ball now, finding Darlow. Darlow looked like he may have got into an offside position, but no flag. Here's Garnacho taking the reverse ball. Pulls it back on the angle. Hamad again. Into the D. Takes it back. Martinez. Again, this thing about the flag as well. Uh, maybe it wasn't offside, but... How long do we go on? Casemiro into the box, back heel. Quickly in there is Milner, taken away by Pedro. Can't get hold of it, goes to Maguire. Manchester United centre-back, left-footed along the ground, out to Ahmad. Certainly United feeling the stronger of the sides at the moment, but one thing you do know about Alvin, they've got pace and can break quickly, so they are a threat from that point of view as we go into the final quarter of the game. Yeah, I think... I say I think Belibo's getting stripped, Johnny Belibo, so I don't know if it's the Milner. Oh. Long ball over the top, Dallas made the run, didn't quite get it under control. Beltman was there quickly, away by Hinchwood, finding Mitoma, got into the middle of the pitch, Gilmore shifting it out, and getting it to Milner quickly, trying to find Welbeck. Three on two here for Albion, Welbeck, he's pushed it too far, but Minter's got pace, gets to the ball, looks for his options, shoots, tight angle, blocked. And once again the decision making may be rough there slightly as Milner tries to cut it out but Casemiro gets it now it's Manchester United breaking its end-to-end -end stuff as Ahmed gets on the ball taking it forward to the edge of the Albion box up against Luis Dunk feeds in Fernandez Fernandez cross the face of goal and a simple tap in for Garnacho Albion appeal for offside of course it'll be checked I don't think there was a flag from the referee's assistant but Garnacho is celebrating but for how long well, I think it's a great run for Fernandez deep. Hamid holds the ball up very well as he played it in that. But then as he played it in front of the natural. But we've had a chance there, Johnny. Four against three, one end. He's onside there. This is the, the pass, probably. Well, Fernandez, Fernandez, Fernandez. He's onside by Neck playing yeah. on again. It's a goal. Yeah, I think it is. It's like it's Messi it might hit Zerbi on his knee. He made it Zerbi's knee he's gone in. If it is, that's, he's offside. There, yeah, he's offside. He's hit him on the knee on the line. He's offside. Yeah, well, what he's, a just tra is he trying to, he's, he's, he's just trying to rob the... He's rob, trying to rob uh, Garnacho of the goal, isn't he? Well, they're just checking that the ball hasn't gone over the, fully over the line before Xerxes forces it into the goal. Because Garnacho shoots... So it's not the pass in original pass, it's actually when Garnacho shoots and Xerxes hovering around the goal line. Uh, he obviously wanted back-to-back -back goals, having scored last week against Fulham. But, uh, Chris Kavanagh will be checking once again with the help of Sean Masielis. On the screens, the familiar white and purple offside. writing. The check has been complete, offside. 
stays 1-1. One, one. Now been trying to take the free kick quickly, but it will allow a change. Carlos Beliva coming on there on this near side, and it will be, as expected, James Milner to come off. I think he's had an excellent game, James Milner, Johnny. Yeah. Apologies if you just heard a little bit of bad language there. Two good chances. I believe he has to do what Milner's just been doing for the second half. Getting forward, getting beyond, winning challenges. Yeah. But forget that look, the goal, what they just look, didn't score, but it was close. Minter there, the top point in the first half, Johnny. The choices he's, he's got there. It's a poor choice for Minter, yeah. shooting. Yeah. Just play across the goal. Yeah. You know, people running in. Welbeck, Pedro, Matoma. Yeah, we said that it was uh, three on two. And so many times we've said it, decision making. That is the key. Well, Ten Hag was incandescent, but I'm not sure he necessarily realises what's happened there. Fernandez in late on steel, but didn't get much of a. Well, I'm not sure he necessarily gets it, Ten Hag, and maybe when he. As it explained, they were trying to explain it to his backroom staff. Here is Believer, first turn and get it all away there to Veltman. Big season ahead for Carlos Believer, you feel. His decision making at times can be improved, and we know he's got talent. Here's Pedro, uh, robbed by Ahmad, played up the pitch. Garnacho latches onto it, waiting for the cavalry. Up against Van Hecker, and we've got players back into position as Garnacho takes his time using his captain Fernandez through the legs of the referee, Casemiro. He's played the advantage. Fernandez wanted the free kick. And that's left there by Fernandez, sliding in his Minte. Gets the return from Gilmore. Can he use his pace? There's three in the line to his right. Can he get his head up? Up against Martinez, slips it into Welbeck, took him away from goal and took it towards Maguire who clears. Do you know what? Welbeck's made a great run there, but it doesn't play him. Don't play him, keep coming inside, Pedro's mate, it's a free. Oh dear, dear, dear. <laughs> Decision making. I think he might be frustrating you a bit this season, Jan Kuvaminte. Yeah, you just seen, he went past, uh, carried the ball brilliantly. Yeah. Left them for dead, didn't he? So it's three against two, you have to pick the right pass. Yeah. Uh, uh, we talked about on the break. They nearly managed to restore their lead, but uh, it remains one apiece. Gilmore over on the right there is Minte. He's done well to get away from his marker again. Now he squares it to Pedro, had to stretch to try and get it under control. Late challenge there on Danny Welbeck by Ahmad. Free kick, two yards outside the box. Well, Minter wants the ball. <laughs> Yeah, he's, he's shoving people away. Gilmore's grabbed it. Oof. Just gets him, doesn't he? Yeah. Just catches him. It was actually, it was actually Ahmad, and normally you'd expect a sort of Casemiro figure to be going in there, but uh, well, it's to the right of centre. Billy Gilmore's taking it back another couple of yards. Help it's going to be a big wall anyway. Isn't it? We're going to have Maguire in there. Zerzi. Zerzi's going to be in there. Casemiro, Darlow. I think there's more changes being considered. I think chat from the match day officials to Robert Madley, who's our fourth official today. To refer, Johnny, Lewis dunks off the free kicks anyway, after last season. <laughs> You're not having him, are you? How many, how many times do <laughs> you get? This, this is his, this this is is his territory, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Normally he goes up to the old over. straight run up. It looks like it'll be either Gilmore uh, or Jan Kuba Minte. United are going to make another change, aren't they? I think it looks like maybe Scott McTominay's going to come back and uh, get stripped off. Maybe a double change planned as well. We'll have to wait and see. And Scott McTominay scored some vital goals for Manchester United. Well, this game's certainly in the balance with 15 minutes remaining here on Saturday Sport. We're just moaning. Looks like Garnacho's going into the Chez Long position. That would lying be, down I, on the ground. That'd be me. I'd have that one. <laughs> Did you? Yeah, yeah. I'm playing an important role, lying on your back. Yeah. Just It'd take me five minutes. Get up. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Right. But so you have to hit the target. Come yeah. on, please. We'll see who does hit it. 
Gilmore steps up right footed and it's straight against the wall comes back to him pushes it to the left Hinchwood floats it back post leaning in there is Pedro saved by Anana it is near post Dunk penalty was foul but I don't think there was enough in it as Darlow takes it forward out to the left hand side Ganacho trying to back into Veltman but Veltman stood his ground well now Belieber striding forward dragged back down there by Kobe Mainu the dark arts coming out now from Manchester United well, that's what we want from Belieber don't we they know his power and they just knock the ball around Man, he put his arm on his shoulder and just dragged him a little back and used his body strength got away from Manu Manu had to bring him down Julio and Ciso is coming on for the Albion for Danny Welbeck Danny Welbeck Danny's not seen it and De Ligt and McTominay are going to come on for Manchester United come on put your I put the ball up and Danny wasn't looking I would have been, te would have been tempted to wait for the free kick to be taken mm. Warren yeah just because of his uh, aerial presence but uh, no one's actually told him have they well yeah. Abby's goal scorer this afternoon coming off another brilliant performance a man in form Warren yeah yeah it was right save Johnny a goal game will do me Johnny that's for sure but yeah he's, he's worked his tidily off the ball as well brilliant and on Edder on the bar Julio in so but what I don't want now John, I don't want cheerleading I want fancy footwork attacking not losing his arms to get the cheerleading going with the crowd Toya not trying to make decisions this yeah Fernandez the captain is coming off and Maguire and Maguire so three three big hitters Johnny off what do you think any other man would be fine to take him off Rashford Maguire and Fernandez won't they yeah <laughs> maybe just saying just uh, making his point that no one is safe De Ligt coming in there so the free kick 20 yards inside the Manchester United half over on the right Gilmore prepares to take it Duncan Van Hecker are forward it's steered across the goal and it's straight towards Anana a bit of a waste that can't afford to do that I want to use that as McTominay gets on the ball immediately swivels rolls it out to the left touch line where Garnaccio returns the favour McTominay still going Gilmore getting back to defend put the ball out for a Manchester United throw just over 10 minutes of normal time remaining here Saturday Sport coming to you live from the Amex one apiece the lift out to the right to find Ahmad Mizrawi trying to get forward the right back the lift across there to Martinez do you think it's going to be a two up front Warren? Ziso seems to be playing quite far forward and that's lobbed over the top Jason Steele has come and he's headed it away there by getting it away from Ahmad decent strikers head of that one layoff by Ziso Pedro lobbing it over the top of the midfielder to get Hinshelwood forward down the left two on one here's Mitoma coming inside of Mizrawi to Gilmore Gilmore back to Mitoma scooping it up Ziso sort of got in his way there really Ahmad hooking it into Xerxes Xerxes taking it away from Gilmore up the line offside the flag went up quickly on that occasion and you can probably tell by the tune 2-1 wasn't it this linesman here's Hinchelwood and Sisu again but he's got it back off the heel of the defender goes down the left looks up fires it straight at the keeper is really the option that just sometimes run into the space for others yes. since he's come on and see so the Tormwick took his space he's all playing on the left it looks like a two him and Pedro rather than and see so playing as the nine I feel like there's some big decision to be made on players Warren coming up in the next 10 days is Mizrawi flicked by Mitoma foul may have been contact there on the Moroccan I think Maz Warri's had a good, good game against Matoma Johnny yeah. I haven't really seen him kind of every time he's always come inside um, he's always come back into traffic he's been well marshalled by the I said oh Anana run that too far forward and Petro tried to press and so did Minter across comes Anana again he's charging out there 
Minte goes down, but I think he got contact on the ball there, Anana. It'll be a corner. How many fans in the North Stand wanted more? Right, the pace there, again, Close him down. Gets the ricochet, but then he drives forward, doesn't he? Just got the ball in time, didn't he? On honour, the Man United goalkeeper. So, corner right side, Minty's going to take it. Should be a left footed in swinger. Dunks at the back post. And Hecker on the six yard box. Belieba drifting in now. Curled in dangerously, comes off the top of Dilly and goes out of play. And it should be another corner this time down the Albion left. Well, it, Can they turn this pressure into a goal? They've lost their main attacker, haven't they, in, in Maguire? You could argue Rashford can defend good in the air as well. Yeah. Gilmore comes across to take it for the Albion. 1-1 one, one here on Saturday Sport. Everybody forward bar Hinchelwood. And Ciso's come to the left and short. That is one option, but Gilmore goes high and long. Punched away by Anana. Good distance there. Hinchelwood heading back. Matoma had stayed on side, but it's cleared easily by United as they get it to the left-hand side. Offside against Garnacho. I don't think it was Jimmy. I think he went in his own half, didn't he? No. Just inside the uh, Albion half. I don't think it will really be relevant because Albion have it. And she would play it back there to steal. Big ten minutes, Johnny. Yeah, for me. You don't want to lose this game. No, certainly not. Yes, it would be nice if they can find a winner in the final seven minutes plus added on time, but in, in part, Manchester United have been good today. Yeah, of, of course, Johnny. I think he's got, got them more organised now, working for each other more. Ten Hag has. Yeah. And showing that ability to make the big decisions as Dunk swings it long towards Matoma. Yeah, he's going to be able to control that. He's up around his neck. I think there's lots of sp uh, green grass behind Johnny to yeah. put that. Uh, I think he's going to put a bit of bend on it, wasn't he? Not sure the manager's going to be too happy with Xerxes either for denying his own team a goal, trying to rob it on the... I think he's just thinking, well, I'm here, but if he doesn't touch it, it's a goal. And because he does, it remained 1-1, but they're looking for a winner here, Manchester United. Darlow rolling it out to Garnacho. Garnacho scooping it up, running in on the angle up against Feltman. Fires it in, Minte gets back, puts the block in, but does concede a corner. Brilliant work from Min today. Absolutely brilliant, Johnny. You saw the danger there, one on one against Beltman. Say the way he helped him right out, didn't he? Made 15 yards in no time. Corner down the Manchester United left. Ahmad's gone across to take it. Xerxes in the middle, so is the lift. Have to focus on their job as they need to attack the ball as well. It's from the left hand side, down in the southeast corner, so. Ahmad with his arms up in the air, left-footed, floating it to the six-yard box. In there's Lewis Dunk, heading it away from Xerxes. Minte trying to get to the second ball, but Garnaccio is there. Out-muscled by the Albion midfield. It's Minte again working hard. Excellent work from him. And Ciso pushing Mazraoui back to the keeper, who's come up towards halfway. Tense final five minutes in the offing. Anana goes long, straight down the throat of Jason Steele. Again, it's a poor run. All right. Alana was offside, but now a break. Hinchwood has it, taking it forward on the left. Rolling it into to Gilmore. Seen some wonderful late finishes from the Albion in recent seasons. Can they do it again here against Manchester United? Belieber doesn't want to get caught in possession, but he's dribbling forward. Trying to get the return into the box he goes, but clever play from Darlow to just shoulder him away from danger. But here's Pedro back into Belieber. Comes back to Pedro again, still doesn't get the shot away, and Kobi Maino is in quickly. McTominay trying to release it out to Garnacho. He keeps it in on the left touchline. McTominay wants to return. Instead, they've gone for the high floated ball. It's over the top of Ahmad. Goes out of play. It's a great ball, really, by Garnacho. Fortunately for the Seagulls. Here's Hinchwood. There to Van Hecker. Well, OK in possession, Carlos Believer, since coming on as a substitute. There may be more in the offing. He's on the ball now, and Ciso stabs it away from 
Pedro could put a, have put his team in trouble here because Garnacho's going down the left side of the box for Manchester United. Players flooding into the box. He tries to take on Van Hecker, who does brilliantly. Stood his ground, kept his positioning really well. Minte feeding Pedro. Pedro trying to get it over Casemiro, who slid in with the tackle. They come back again. They want the handball. The advantage is played. They've got players forward. Pedro in possession. Goes straight down the middle of the pitch. Flicks it away. It's gone wide there to Minte. He's got four to pick out in the middle. Taking his time. Oh, and he's played it towards the near post. You can see so unmarked on the edge of the box. Can't believe it. Rolled out to McTominay. Both sides going for the win. It's been a frenetic afternoon. Danny Welbeck's up on his feet. I think he's... But frustrated himself there as you say they do not want to lose this game Anthony's going to come on for Manchester United Ayari and Adingra and Ruta are all going to come on for the Albion it's great when you can look at the bench and go Oof. three attacking attacking players like this coming on I'm saying that like Ayari's attacking midfield player yep well opportunity may not for them in a minute but probably may who's got away from two challenges there to the near touchline Van Hecker comes forward nicks it off Zerksy up it goes to Enciso tried to nutmeg Martinez and Van Hecker bringing his man down could be a yellow card there bit of a standoff yellow card for Van Hecker I think Van Hecker knew what he was doing there but he brought his man down and he actually disrupted the Manchester United attack quite cleverly he did it was and see so thinking there. Yeah. Play the way you're facing. Good ball into you. Just give it back to him. Didn't watch around him there. It's going to be at least five, six, seven minutes when you yeah. added on this game. So here come the changes. Karen Matoma coming to the near side, but it's Gilmore who's going to come off for Ayari. Okay, is it me? Gilmore is certainly coming off. An intake coming off, the Dinger comes on. Please welcome to the Alex, number 14, Jorginho Ruta. the final man to come on, making his debut for the Seagulls. And it is Matoma who's coming off. Well, those changes made before the 90, so another minute and a half will be added on for those. And to the, in theory, anyway. Coming off Ahmad's coming off. So, flurry of changes. Reminder, it is a free kick for Manchester United inside their own half. Casemiro to take, has got it out to Anthony. And to his first touch from this right side, trying to take on Hinchelwood. Gets to the ball and does he's kept it in. The shot was there, it's blocked. Appeals for handball by the Manchester United fans. It comes back in for Casemiro. That low shot along the ground there is saved by Seal. Casemiro asking the referee, was it handball? Launch long. Jorginho Ruta just trying to get it under control, failed to do so. That's exactly what you want at this stage of the game, though. You need someone to get up hold of it. Triple change made by the manager. Given away by United. Ayari up there to Pedro. Pedro trying to skip past his man, but there's covering defenders left and right. He's up there to McTominay. Well, controlled by the Before Scottish the international. Seven minutes, seven minutes then to be added on here at the Amex. It's been a really pulsating game. I think we're in for a pulsating finish as well as Jorginho gets it on that right-hand side drifting to the edge of the box reverse ball Beltman arriving sticks up the cross leaning in is a dingra lent in too far and it came off the top of his head just a misjudgment really there by the Ivory Coast winger and foul they're taking the free kick quickly it, the ball wasn't moving there I don't know why the referees pulled that back no I don't know why he's pulled it back he placed it it didn't look like it was moving all you, all you do you put your hand on it so you stop it spot it and play maybe and that's what he did just, maybe he just has to lift his hand slightly well they will have a free kick all the same 
and Ciso's going to take it just one in the wall which is Anthony it's a yard in from the left touch line 10 yards from the corner flag everybody forward for the Albion bar Hinshelwood maybe Ruta could make a real impact coming on to make his debut hovering around the back post up against Darlow fired in six yard box headed away didn't quite come down there for Ayari but he's tried to get to the second ball shoots blocked out for a throw yeah just keep the pressure on there keep him penned in it's a good ball in from NC Sol yeah, it was a good cross wasn't it from the free kick I think that was a good ball in from the right hand side Johnny when a drink I don't know where you're going with that doesn't need to just stand still yeah um, here he is again from the left Adingra and get away from Anthony Believer lays it off injured has to back pedal bypasses Lewis Dunk to find Jan Paul Van Hecker here's Jorginho Ruta from the right hand side coming in field a little silky run finds Pedro was fouled I think referee didn't put his arm up for advantage but here's Enciso from the left skips onto his right foot he wants to shoot he does it's over the bar always rising I don't think that was ever hitting the target really reasonable effort but really comfortable Lanana able to see it over the top of his crossbar for a goal kick still 1-1 yeah he just couldn't get it on out of his feet could he we yeah. saw a bit of skill from Jorginho on the other side Johnny what's coming on his left foot danced around three or four Man United players well, then got brought down okay and the referee oh. played advantage yeah well, don't believe yeah. Her. believe her getting back to dispossess Kobe Mainu and the back pass to Jason Steele nothing silly at the back out it goes to Veltman. Well, we heard Tuesday night in the podcast, didn't we? Adam Pope talking about, you think he's going to lose the ball, but he just manages to nick it away from somebody. He's on the ball again now, down the line. And Ciso curling it in there. Edinga arriving, put behind by De Ligt. He's collided with his own player there, I think. Out for an Albion corner. Well played there. Got the ball, but a great ball from Steely. I like it. He looked up, didn't he? Rolled it down the line. Well, what Ciso did, got looked up, saw Edinga running in whipped it across it's a good run by Adinger as well getting into that centre forward position in between the two central defenders causing problem for the United defence can we get one of these set plays and can we just <laughs> score from one yeah corner right side and Ciso to take it right footed away from goal it's over everybody falls to Adinger edge of the box poor first touch and then he can't get the shot away but Van Hegger pulls it back Ayari slides it back in Adinger two defenders in front of him chips it back post Petro! Albion in injury time! The top scorer from last season in the right place at the right time! Brighton and Hove Albion 2, Manchester United 1. Great vision from Edringer there. Got his head up. Saw two Brian players coming in the back post and just chipped it in there. And there's Pedro. The simple header. It looked, to be fair, Johnny, for me, it looked offside, but we'll have a look in a minute, but we'll wait and see. Just get the ball going, Nick, me off the set play. Second ball. He picks his head up there. Is he offside? It's come to him. No, no, he's well onside. I think Delic's gone back in there, hasn't he? Which he shouldn't do. What a noise at the Amex. Well, I said we've had some grandstand finishes, Warren. But that one's right up there, but there's still a few minutes still to be played. Yeah, I said we said earlier that no draws in this fixture in the Premier League. And let's hope we can hold on for the next three or four minutes. What a love, though. The header back across goal, Warren. Calm, didn't worry about power, just went for precision. Correct, Johnny. Do you know what? What as wonders he's got him on in the team as well! <laughs> well, I'll be impressing. Ayari, mix it off United. Three in the middle. Can't can he can't quite keep it in? Now we need to keep their cool here. For the league. Well, we heard it at Goodison Park. We're hearing it now at the Amex. If they can hold on to this win, they will remain top of the league believe it brilliant the game yeah good work in the midfield it pinch it out to a dingra can he go out wide no, he's just run straight into a manchester united player but there's carlos believer the insurance policy is there certainly a foul free kick given by craig paulson 
who I may say it just because he's given Albion a free kick, but I think he's refereed the game in an excellent fashion today. Yeah, you're giving you got referees 10 out of 10 today, Johnny, that's for sure. Let the game flow. But they're believer, Johnny. I, I think they might have had the old uh, shackles taken off him and said, look, you can get forward. Hmm? Yeah, don't be that sitting defensive no. midfielder. Interesting. Chip forward towards the corner flag by Hinchel when That'll it goes do. out of play. Applauded by Pedro, he doesn't mind that. The referee's been 10 out of 10. Have Albion been 10 out of 10? Let us know. Final whistle coming Oops. up after full time. Long throw by Mazraoui. Believer in there again. Adingra giving it away. Believer trying to help it back. Ayari, right, header. decent header. And Ciso needs to be stronger. One by Kobi Mainu. Mainu up the line to Anthony. Little flick off there. Hinchwood lets it go out. Brilliant judgment there by the youngster. Seven minutes have been played. Brighton and Hove Albion 2. Manchester United 1. Throw to be taken by Hinchwood. Up the line. Pedro, who could well have won it with that goal. Trying to put pressure on Masrawi. Lose out. The big cheer tells you it all. Full time at the Amex. The Seagulls once again have beaten Manchester United. This time by two goals to one. Their excellent form against the Manchester side continues. It's back-to-back -back wins for ha Fabian Herzler and his team. And it's that man, João Pedro, in injury time with the winner. The Seagulls stay top of the division. Yeah, it's a, it's a great ending, Johnny, isn't it? And it's a great sign that we're still top of the league. I thought we deserved the win in the end, Johnny. I, re I really did. I thought we played very well today. And Man United played well. I think it was a great game of football. But when you need somebody cool in front of goal, no, no better man than Pedro, isn't it? Yeah, uh, credit with the cross was decent as well, wasn't it? I mean, some might say it's on a plate, but in that moment in time, he is a special player. 20 goals last season, nine in the Premier League. Maybe he can make it into double figures. If him and Welbeck can make it into double figures, who knows what this team can achieve, Warren? Well, this manager said we're going to score goals. I, mean, I think we will do, Johnny. We'll concede quite a few as well. But I don't mind if we win 4-3, or if it's 1-0 or 2-1, just like today. I thought it was excellent. But it will frustrate me, Minter, that's for sure. I think it frustrates the manager, it frustrates his teammates. But that pace, Johnny, is frightening. Not just as attacking, but defending as well. Because he held Dortmund out on numerous occasions today. Where last season we, made, we couldn't get back to help him out. Beltman or whoever's playing fullback. Today, you got some of the tournament on this side helping out Inglewood. Very well, we're going to play like that. We, we dif get forward together and we defend together. We, we saw that today. We're certainly going to see some entertainment this season, I think, under Fabian Herzler. The Seagulls players heading over to the East Stand, applauding the massive support that the home fans have given them here today. It's a great start to the season. Lots of positives. Lots of new faces as well. Ruta coming on to make his debut. And CISO returning as well. He's got options, particularly going forward. Yeah, and that's what you want, Johnny, as a manager. You, you look at your bench and you go, yeah, then three on. Last ten minutes, you cause problems. And you think, a drinker, it did cause problems because he set up the winner. Didn't he? Lovely little dink, back post. Great. And our... Ayala in midfield, very good about the pitch. I think Believer was excellent mm. when he came on. I thought Billy Gilmore was excellent all game. I thought he, he'd give a man of the match today. Uh, that's for sure. But sometimes you need a striker look. And the striker look there was the their centre forward trying to pinch a goal off his teammate. And it's cost them. The lead, 2 1, goes back to 1 1. And we, we win the game towards the end. So, yes, it's a uh, great. Great day and it's a great afternoon for the Brighton fans. But they did have to defend for 15, 20 minutes in that second half. Manchester United probably the better side. But they show resilience, don't they? They come back. And with that pace and intensity they have in the team, you always feel they might have a route back in. Yeah, and, and you know what, Johnny? I think they're more the, the fitter this season. Well, they said the training sessions are intense. Yeah, I think they're fitter. OK, they deserve the Adam and it, it worked them on last season. 
But I think this last took it to a step. Step. Yeah. Step Jack further. Mitchell enjoying it, getting the North Stand going. And why not? Well, well last, week, last week it was a man to doing it. Yeah. This week it seemed. I know. And Georgino Ruta joining in. He's only played about seven minutes, but he's certainly enjoying himself as well. Johnny, you have to enjoy these moments. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Plenty more games to go, that's for sure. But it's certainly... Well, it's not been a bad start to the bank holiday weekend, has it? Reaction on the way in the final whistle. But full time here. Brighton and Albion 2, Manchester United 1. Wonderful stuff, Johnny and Warren. Thank you. The Albion fans have been singing this evening or this afternoon. They're going to be singing this evening. Brilliant when we want your reaction. You can do it in lots of ways. You can text, you can tweet, you can WhatsApp us, and you can ring Warren in about three or four minutes' time. So Warren's going to have a one-minute breather. We're just going to get up to get, let the dust settle at the Amex, and we're back there. And we want to hear from you. You've got half an hour or so of Warren's time to react. You can text, tweet, call... All, I'll give you all the numbers in a moment's time, but before we do that, let's drop in on our featured cricket, our uh, Sussex Sport commentator, Adrian Arms. His summer job is watching Sussex cricket. He's excited by the Albion result today, but uh, right now the business is, can Sussex battle against Yorkshire, Adrian? Day three at Scarborough. Good afternoon again. Yes, hello, Tim. Well, there's no question Sussex have tried to dig themselves out of a pretty deep hole here in Scarborough. Since you were last with us, they've lost another wicket, that of James Coles, who was bowled by Jordan Thompson for 13. But Tom Allsop and the skipper John Simpson are trying to repair the damage. Sussex now 97 for four. It means that they still trail by Yorkshire by 40 runs. But Allsop, who batted so well in the first innings, he made 86 not out. And Simpson, you feel a lot depending on these two. And there is an inclement weather forecast tomorrow so you never know the rain might save Sussex in this game. Elsewhere, talking about the rain, it's raining at the Oval and has been all day. Uh, Lancashire, if they do get underway, four without loss, still trailing Surrey by 236. In the Test match, uh, Sri Lanka have been bowled out for 326 in their second innings. It means England need 205 runs to win. Uh, great stuff, Adrian. Thank you very much indeed. So, ball by ball commentary on Sussex continuing online. Sorry, if they get any play, it'll be there. And the test match, of course, online through the BBC as well with TMS and Five Sport Extra. To our three football matches at three, our top games. Crawley have gone to Wigan and League One. Good afternoon to Gary Smith. Yes, good afternoon, Tim. Welcome to the Brick Community Stadium where Crawley are facing Wigan in a league match for the first ever time. They stand third in League One after the, uh, two matches in the fledgling table and for the first time this season in the league. Scott Lindsay has to make a change to the starting 11. Adi Adiyamo, match winner at Cambridge last week, comes in in place of Scott Malone and his place on the bench is taken by Anthony Papadopoulos. Aside from that, it is as you were at Cambridge last weekend for Crawley, Tim. Wonderful stuff, Gary. Thank you. You can call you make it three from three in League One. Can Worthing get back-to-back -back wins in Worthing? Woking in National League. Very good afternoon to Tom Mitchell, who's at Ebbsfleet for us. Afternoon, Tim. It was a certainly a difficult first two games for Woking with defeats against Ultra and Gateshead. But they got off the mark on Tuesday night with a hard-fought victory over Dagenham and Redbridge. And the man who got the late winner, Charlie Kendall, he's actually still on the bench for day, today's game. Uh, Lewis Walker, who started up front, does come out the side. It's Dion Moore who starts up front for his first Woking start. So it's going to be a tough task for Woking today despite Ebbsfleet's poor start of the season. It's Ebbsfleet versus Woking here at the Cufflink Stadium. Cannot wait. Great stuff. And we are live at Aldershot Town. They host Oldham at the EBB this afternoon, Ahmed Noor alongside Steve Gibbs, so those commentaries uh, the Aldershot and working online in around 25 minutes 5 to 3 and then we'll have full commentary online and we'll dip in after 3 after the final whistle that is coming up now, we're offering you the chance to have your say on the Seagulls, good afternoon so far it has been All the reaction from the big match, this is the final whistle What a start for Fabian Hertzler, a brilliant win at Goodison Park last week against Everton. They've come home to a raucous welcome and they've beaten Manchester United in a really good game. A decent United side. They've won by two goals to one with a late one from you know who. Yeah, corner right side and Ciso to take it. Right footed away from goal. 
over everybody, falls to Dingra, edge of the box, poor first touch and then he can't get the shot away but Van Hegger pulls it back, Ayari slides it back in, Adingra, two defenders in front of him, chips it back post, Pedro! Albion in injury time, the top scorer from last season, in the right place, at the right time, Brighton and Hove Albion 2, Manchester United 1. Great vision from Adringa there. Got his head up, saw two Brian players coming in the back post and just chipped it in there. And there's Pedro, the simple header. Well, we heard it at Goodison Park. We're hearing it now at the Amex. If they can hold on to this win, they will remain top of the league. We also heard it on the podcast. Warren was singing it as well. We are top of the league. The Albion are two wins from two. What do you make? of that performance who stands out for you a couple of the new guys playing as well today we want your thoughts on anything Albion related between now and three Warren Arsenal here to take your call the final whistle BBC Radio Surrey Radio Surrey Yes, the dust settling at the Amex. A 2 1 win for the Seagulls. Top of the Premier League. Number of games at 3 and 1 at 5.30. We'll look at those later in the afternoon. But this is how we want you to get in contact today. You can call us and talk to Warren on 0800 232 1046. Or you can text and WhatsApp us. Text 81 333. Start your message with the word Surrey. Or you can WhatsApp us 0800 321 333. And again, Start your message with the word Surrey. BBC Radio Surrey. Yes, that phone line open for 25 minutes. Welcome back to Warren Aspinall at the Amex. Warren, a great result. What, what was the key for you for winning that one? I think the key was never giving in. Mm-hmm. Uh, the fitness was key. The substitutions, making... An impact. You always ask your substitutions to make an impact, and there we saw an impact from Madringa to the back post. Okay, Pedro was there, but I think all substitutions today made an impact. Giorgino coming on, I thought he did very well. Believer thought it was excellent when he came on, drove forward, used his strength. So yeah, I think it was. Uh, I thought it was a brilliant performance. A real depth on that bench. It was you or Johnny mentioned it in commentary and before the game, indeed. Yeah, well, yeah. There's the strength in depth and, and there's more to come isn't there yes and you think Grada wasn't even uh, involved yes he's 25 million but the manager's not rushing him he's only 19 he says he's not rushing him but then you think maybe O'Reilly will be coming in maybe over the weekend or Monday the left back will be coming in he's flown in already so yes the chairman's backing this manager when you think about it it'll be nearly over well just under 200 million is spent it's a lot of money isn't it when you think about it a team like Brighton but this is where the club are going uh, we want to finish in the in, in Europe it was top seven six we, we're trying to get, climb that that league as possible and at the moment the top of the league aren't we and that's where we want to be in and around there all season so yes it's a great result, but now the focus is on the Arsenal next weekend, and mm-hmm. that's probably the focus of the, the players. And the yes, they'll have a little celebration with the, with the families today, but then tomorrow, Monday, they go again for the Arsenal. Two games, six goals, six points, four different goal scores, and as you say, top of the table. Let us bring in David from Seaford, who, David, I imagine, leaving the Amex as we speak. Good afternoon. You're on with Warren for the first time this yeah, season. Nick. I hope you had a good summer, and it's not been a bad start to the season, is it? No, I had a good summer, thanks. Yeah, I'm on my way back home now. Yeah, no, I mean, what a great start. I mean, we had a great start at least last week with our, you know, three points away, and today bit more cagey as to what was going to happen, particularly towards the end of the game. I mean, the first half, I think we played really, really well. Maybe not so well in the second half, but then obviously a great little final heading by Pedro, you know, a few minutes before the end to give us the three points, which I think we deserve. So all in all, you know, to the start of the, our, our season at home, you know, a brilliant three points and a great game to watch and really entertaining football. Who impressed you I today? Think... Sorry, Warren, no, go, go for it. Go Billy, I mean, David, Billy, I Gil, think... Billy Gilmore. 
Yeah, really? you've got my man the match yeah. Gilmore. Yeah, I think that, that Billy Gilmore, will buy, and particularly in the first half, I mean, I know I don't know what the latest rumour is. Is he going to go? Is he going to stay? I mean, it's interesting that he was picked today and started, and but I thought he was superb. I mean, he was into everything: defending, attacking, chasing back. I mean, by far the my, my man of the match. <laughs> yeah, I thought Billy did very well, but it's about small margins in games of football. And today, I thought we, with the substitutes of Man United, Zerky, if he doesn't try to nick a goal off his teammate, then we're two one down. Uh, so, like I say, small margins, and that, that's what. So you got one one, and you, then you have to go for it. And I thought we did well. And I thought when you look at the bench, you want the substitutions to make an impact. And I thought they did tonight, today. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. When the substitutes came on, obviously they, they played their part. I think it was interesting watching Minte today. I mean, he's, he's got great promise for the future in terms of he was a very entertaining, forward-thinking, quick, you know, wide player. I think the only thing that let him down a few times was his final decisions or his final touches or his final passes. So, so I think he's work in progress, but great potential and a very exciting player to watch. Yeah, I think his decision-making, you're right, there's put on. But what about his defensive work? He worked his side. He helped Veltman out on numerous occasions today. Uh, he didn't want to leave Veltman one-on-one -on -one situations. Got back and made it two, two against one in, in Brian's favour. I thought it was tremendous defensively, as well as going attacking. But like I say, it will come, his decision-making. And we're gonna, we've got a, a player there, that's for sure. From listening to you just now, uh, it sounds like we have got some new, new defenders coming in. Obviously, that, that's been happened quite recently. Well, the, the, the lad flew in last yesterday, didn't he? Uh, so he's, he's probably having his medical today and tomorrow. Uh, so he'll be signing. Ferdi uh, Kagioglu from from Turkey. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Kagioglu. So he, he, he he'll be he'll be signing. Uh, don't forget, we've got a Stupion coming back from, to fitness. Inter will right. then probably move to right back with Veltman to fight for that space. So it's looking good. Yes, we're going to see players go. Uh, but one you don't want to see go is Bill Gilmore. You don't want him to see go. Yeah. I don't mind if, yeah. if you want to sell the likes of NCSO. Maybe. You, some, somebody, has, somebody has to give. Because you can't have all these yeah. number 10s and attacking players. And they Definitely. want to play football. It's been, it's been great to see that obviously we've never ever known a transfer market window like this. And uh, as you said earlier, up, you know, getting not too far short of the £200 million mark. I mean, that really shows us as fans and shows the club that, you know, that although we lack transfer window signings in the general transfer window this year, I mean, in terms of making up for it now, I mean, it does show, obviously, the club's commitment to moving forward and getting a top six position, hopefully, and then challenging for Europe again. So, you know, we've got the squad now to really build on this, this great start to the season, and I think we're in, in for a very exciting season. Well, if you, if, if you stand still in the Premier League, you, you, you know you know what happens, don't you? You think you know you, you've got a good enough squad, uh, we'll be okay this season. Before you know it, you can get relegated. So the chairman's seen that he wants to get back into Europe. He's had a taste of Europe, and so you have to bring probably better players or in in uh, and have a deeper squad. So rightly so as well. And so we've seen these players come in. Uh, it's up to the minds now to get them to gel. Yeah, and the interesting thing is, although lots of the players that are coming in, probably the likes of me, haven't heard of them before, because obviously you know, they're not they're not sort of normal players that we would see or hear about. I mean, what we've got to also think is that you know, the Cubs have proven record so far about bringing in players, uh, and then them obviously proving their worth, and then you know, being worth a lot more later on. Well, I think we just have to have to believe that all these players that are coming in in you know, the positions that they're coming in, they're going to be great potential for the future. And uh, you know, at the time that's needed when they need to be you know being the starting eleven, that they'll be ready to play their part. But all in all, I think we're in for a really exciting season and you can't wish for a better start than six points. Well, if you think the first part of your answer there was uh, you've not heard of these players coming in. Right then, did we, uh, did, did, did we know much about Matoma when he came in? Probably not. Van no. Hecker, no. did you know about him? No. no. Minter? No. Pedro? No. So, <laughs> the players who come in, yes, they're, they're probably well known in, in German football or whatever the countries are coming from. It's just like we're probably too lazy to watch German football, Italian football, Spanish football. There are some gems in there at the right price. <laughs> so, it is good. If you look at Southampton's policy this season, they've gone to paying £15 million pound for the likes of uh, the, the the lad from two two players from, from who played for Sheffield United last season. What happened to Sheffield United last season? They got relegated. So why would you go and buy a Cameron Archer or uh, uh, an, 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 and the other lad who they got uh, who, who was on loan last year at Sheffield? You won't go. And, you won't trust them because they weren't good enough for Sheffield United. So they're not going to good enough for Southampton, I don't think. So there's yeah. the problem there. So 
for me I think we've, we've we've done in the market very well but sometimes you still have to, don't forget we've, we've, we've recouped over 40 million uh, with a gross and uh, undav uh, so and I think there'll be a few more leaving the the, the, the squad uh, in the next 10 days so we'll see how much we can recoup. It's OK, we're spending lots of money, but we're recouping a bit as well. And we're sending players out on loan to good clubs like Barcourt to the Spanish side. <laughs> yeah, I think you're, you're, you're right. We, we, so this isn't probably the last of the activity we're going to see. But I think we just have to rely on the fact that, I'll say, that our recruitment team have got a fantastic record for going abroad, picking up, as you say, players at a, a reasonable price from overseas and then, then obviously you know, filling in and playing well with us. So... As I said, you know, we've got a lot to look forward to and it's, and it's good that we've got a deep, in-depth squad should we need to, to call them, as you said, in case of injuries and things like that. So, as I said, we've got everything to look forward to for this season and, and let's hope that we can push it down for a European uh, position. David, wonderful stuff. Thank you for giving us a call. That's David, who uh, based himself in the West Stand, uh, every home game. You can call us. Warren's here for another 15 minutes. A brilliant 2-1 win. Pedro scoring in injury time to give them the win after a goal, of course, for uh, Welbeck in the first half. This is the number to ring if you want to get hold of Warren now. BBC Radio Surrey. Call 0800 587 1046. Well, and lots of tweets coming in. Uh, Nick Ansley, you've touched on this with David just now, really. Minte, not quite clicked today. Good lesson for him, though, uh, versus a fantastic defence or defender. And, and Amog says, we've still got Verbruggen, Ferdy, uh, Gruder, Purvis, O'Reilly and Solly to come. So, again, you touched on that with David. There's strength in depth already and more to come. Well, yeah, Riley's not come yet, so no. <laughs> let's, no let's get that. Get that. Assuming he's going to sign, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, so the players who, who, who we've got at disp our disposal is still some good players, and like I said, there's some good players coming back from from injury. Uh, they're not going to be ready till probably a couple of well, end of this month probably uh, in Stupian. But the likes of uh, Ferguson. He's going to take a little bit longer. So, yeah, then, then you've got a, a big squad, but the big squad, you only can have 25, uh, mm -hmm. so he's going to have to whittle it down. Uh, so, the likes of Sarmiento, who's not featured today, does he go back out on loan somewhere else? Uh, does he want to play football? So, he may have to go out on loan again. So, Ego, does he, does he go out on loan? Lamptey, does he go? Because um, if you think, if, if Interwood comes to the right-back development, so you've got two... Two, two there so Lamptey's not going to be involved is he and you can't have a player of Lamptey's quality uh, sitting in the stands just picking up his wages so you need to either get him out on loan or sell him Tom in Eastbourne has texted Gilmore must stay rock solid future captain uh, some more on Twitter here we've got Mark with a C Warren says Ruta and Adingra changed the game with seven minutes left they were impressive, were they? Is that a little strong, or was that exactly what they did do? Well, they didn't change the game, did they? What did <laughs> Adringis crossed the ball for Pedro, uh, so he got his head up in the right area, and, and he found Pedro, who calmly finished the ball. Ruta came on on the left hand side, bit good bits of skill, but that's what you want. You want when the, a tiring defender from United, you need another a fresh player to run at him and, and cause him problems, and that's what he did. So yeah, that, and that's where you, when you, your tactics and your substitutions have to make an impact, and that's what they did today. Uh, Mwepu Magic says Adingra's composure for this goal was excellent. I'm a big fan of his. I have been critical of his end product in the past. The class to take that breath, to look up, to spot Pedro, as you said, Warren, and then put the ball on his head, is excellent. Composure's key, isn't it? Because you did mention perhaps that's lacking at times from Minte. Yeah, it's lacking at times, but sometimes it's. <laughs> When, when you're running at defenders and, and you have to make the split decision, a quick decision, and sometimes it's hard, but the drinker got his head up and saw two players at the back post. But what we did very well in that situation, we took the corner and we kept it alive. Then it fell to a drinker on his left hand side, and he just got his head up and, and just put it back across goal. For we had two players there back post who could have finished it, but the Pedro Carl was a cucumber and just heads it into the. The goal back across goal gives the goalkeeper no chance. You, I, it was great celebrations at you and, and Johnny dis, discussed brilliantly. I don't know if you picked up Billy Gilmore and you know just saying he was the last off the pitch during those celebrations. I mean, 
big day today, wasn't it, for him? You know, we, we don't know his future at all, do we? But 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 he was given a chance today, and as you say, he's your man of the match. He was David's man of the match, um, and he's he's sheer quality. We had a text there saying possible future captain if he stays. Well, I don't know, but he he plays for his national side under Scotland. I thought he he does very well for Brighton, keeps the ball ticking away. I thought initially when he first started, the first ten fifteen minutes, he he just was was the, kept the ball and played it back and was playing behind Mason Mount and Fernandez. Well, once he got in front of those two, uh, that's when he caused problems and started spraying the ball around. Uh, so yeah, I think he, he's been a great asset. And I said in the commentary. If somebody picks him up for 15 million, it's a snip for the opposition, isn't it? I thought, he's, like you say, he's a wonderful player for 15 million. You, don't get, you can't, just can't get a good championship player like that <laughs> to, to sell him for them, aren't they? Really? If you think Cameron Archie had gone to, gone to uh, Southampton, well, I know it's a different position and, and whatever, but they've only paid 15 million for him. I think it'll be a snip. I don't know if it's in his contract. He can go for 15 million. I'm not too sure. Well, uh, he's had a good game today. But he has to, if he wants to stay and, and, and he has to keep, keep playing like that, I thought Baliba was excellent when he came on. I thought he brought the, brought the play up, draw forward. I thought he did very well. I want to talk about him in just a moment's time. If you're listening and you want to take part, if you're leaving the Amex, if you're at home, if you're travelling around the patch, you know, it's still the summer, maybe you're on holiday somewhere, maybe you're hearing us abroad, give us a call or get in that touch in other ways. This is how to do it. Warren's here for another eight minutes. You can call us and talk to Warren on 0800 232 1046 or you can text and WhatsApp us. Text 81 333, start your message with the word Surrey or you can WhatsApp us 08000 321 333 and again, start your message with the word Surrey. BBC Radio Surrey Yes, we are eight minutes away from three o'clock. We're going to keep an ear, of course, on Woking Old Shot in the National League. We've got online commentary with our commentators on the BBC Sport website on that one. Crawley, now they are away at Wigan. Uh, we don't have internet commentary rights like the Albion on that one, but we do, of course, uh, you, our commentator, Gary Smith, is available via the club website, as Johnny and Warren are with the Albion. But, of course, Tuesday night, Warren and Johnny will be at the Amex for the arrival of Crawley, and that will be on the radio. So Crawley, uh, Brighton of Albion at the Amex on Tuesday night. Full live commentary, 7.45. We're on air just after the news at 7. Uh, Warren leaving us in the next seven or eight minutes. Warren, the point you made just before uh, we were giving out the number once again, Belieber, you thought he was really good today. I've been trying to bring it up sort of at, at, at the end of the last game in, in the... In, in the pod midweek where we had so much to cram in it was that idea that Milner at 38 is still looking really good and today you mentioned twice the strength and the energy he had so I wouldn't like to play against him when he was 22 um, but believe it's challenging him for that place and that's exactly what the manager wants choice yeah, he does and, and yeah. what, what what he'll be doing believe it, he'll be learning off Milner yes because uh, he's got an experienced player there Milner will be talking him through and and all them kinds of things so he's got a great leader there uh, and if he watches him closely he can be a great pl player believer uh, I think the shekels have been taken off him a little bit he's not just in front of the back four and that reason I thought he was excellent today because he brought the lines and then <coughs> he's so powerful uh, his frame he just held players off he's excellent the um the, the, the arch of believer the, 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 the delivery the improvement curve of Belieber, I wouldn't compare it to perhaps Casido or, or or the like, but it, ha, is he improving at that sort of level? Is he getting better and better every sort of you know half season? Well, yeah, Casido was, was a one-off, wasn't he? Uh, probably a bit reminds me a bit like Manu. It reminds me a bit like mm. Casido. Maybe Basuma, I'm thinking of more. Yeah, yeah. Basuma was mm. took his time, didn't he? Mm. But yeah, I think he's. Uh, He's an excellent prospect. Well, again, what do you do if, if do we keep him? Uh, he'll be wanting to play football. So, I already do, do we keep him? There's lots of players who who are who are in and around. If we bring another centre half in, Webster. Uh, so it's, it's got it's a strong squad, uh, and that's what you want to go on on on, on three fronts, don't you? Got cup competitions. Uh, and that so yeah it's, it's, it's uh, excellent at the moment but it's only 
early days, isn't it? Top of league at the moment. Maybe Man City might get a, an atful today. Might <laughs> against Ipswich. Yeah. Say, yeah, yeah. But then we, we go next week t against the Arsenal, don't we? It's another big test for us. Well, that will be really, really interesting. We will build up to that one. No podcast, of course, next week. If you keep hearing the word podcast and don't know that we do it, it is... Uh, We've been following the Albion in the Premier League for, yeah, all seven seasons. Now this is their eighth season. It's really good fun. Warren, Johnny, discussing all the last seven years, all the ups and downs, the ins and outs, and we're doing it again this season. It's available now exclusively on BBC Sounds. A lot of you used to get it on your normal podcast provider. It's now exclusive to BBC Sounds. Uh, bit of a shame, but that's what it is. However, the, the in contrast, we are now able, through the same podcast subscription if you subscribe to bbc sounds you'll get the podcast every week but also some extra content some of warren's thoughts from tonight the reaction from tonight possibly the highlights as they've won might be able to stick them out later as well that's all available it'll be a push through to your phone your device and, and uh, the podcast returning a week on tuesday it'll be after the transfer window the dust will have settled as warren has been saying we'll know who has finally gone out and thin that squad uh Hope you're well, Timmy in Sussex. He says, I'm a season ticket holder, couldn't be at the match today as I'm recovering from a nasty tooth infection, but what a result for the Seagulls. Here's to back-to-back -back wins. So, Brighton of Albion winning by two goals to one at Manchester United. We'll get reaction for you uh, from Johnny downstairs as soon as we can. Warren's off in around five minutes. Before you go, Warren, uh, Owen says, wherever Brighton go, Jow will be the one who leads the way. Time and time again, Pedro delivers in the biggest moments. We're so lucky to have him. It was that chat with you and Johnny before about, you know, there's a price tag on Pedro for a reason, and he was the top scorer last season. You know, they they think it's worth investing £40 million in Rooter, and hopefully he'll come true. But Pedro, it's that class, isn't it? You don't spend £30 million on someone necessarily. He just hasn't got that star quality, which he showed today. I think he's a very good player, Pedro, but I think the, the Seagulls will be sweeping around this ground, won't they, uh, to take... To have a look at him, it was You're still Arsenal. worried he might go to Arsenal, aren't you? Yeah, I'm, I'm with, not just Arsenal, other teams uh, it could take him. I think he may have a, a, a clause in his contract, you don't know, do we? So, yes, if we could fight him off and keep him uh, uh, when September the 1st comes, he's still a Brighton player, then that'd be brilliant. But if he keeps playing like that and scoring, uh, it's, it, it'll be hard. But the chairman is, he's not spent over 200, well, just on the short of 200 million. So he needs to keep these uh, players happy. Uh, so yes, we don't we don't know what the situation is and, and, and who will go. But what we'll do now, I think we'll, there will be a few players going before uh, mm -hmm. September the first, or out on loan. That's for sure, because you can't have a, a 30 on man squad because six, seven are going to be not available for any any football, only the cup games. But you, you, and you, you talk about that, squad, don't you? yes. And you talk about that massive 200 million investment plus. What's key this time, I think, in terms of the fans' perception, and I'm, you know, I speak on their behalf and not for them. That's their job. But the they were losing these big names, you know, McAllister, you know, Ben, you know, what, what, what Ben White, wasn't it? You know, the, 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 they lost some big names, Basuma. This time they may lose a Pedro, but but it's not straight away in the summer it's not like it, it, it's either a ploy or something like he'll do it if i suppose if they have to just before the window ends it seems to be a slightly different approach lots of investment and if the big names go it's because probably albion don't have much choice because they've matched their their fee or whatever well yeah we we bought in the, the players like Giorgino for 40 million thinking one of these players might go you don't know what they're thinking is behind the chairman do you ferguson when he comes back fit so he'll be named in the squad and see so we've got so much attacking quality but like I said you know, we all can't play uh, and sometimes you'll, you'll, you'll struggle to find a, a place on the bench for them uh, if I'm really honest so if that O'Reilly comes in does he play centre midfield or does he play as a number 10 so there's another attacking player mm. uh, so it's uh um, Omani, does he go? He has, he has to go out on loan because uh, he's not going to be in, in, involved with all these attacking players. He wasn't involved today, but he's out in front of me now, uh, playing, uh, well, training out there. But if you think who's out there, you've got Roots, Georgino's out there, Lampty's out there, Eagles out there, Ayali's out there. Then then, then you've got the, the other youngsters, even younger than them, they're, they're out there training. Belieber, Samiento. So there's a lot of players there. And, then, and don't forget that if you get them two signings over the line 
uh, this weekend there's another two so some, something has to give so if it's selling a few players or sending them out on loan you, you don't have to do that well, well that's about it that leads us very nicely just to one more question you mentioned who's out there on the pitch now what are your thoughts in terms of what he might do against Crawley here at the Amex on, on Tuesday night? League Cup, it's the second round for the Albion, uh, or, you know, the first round, second round for Crawley. H what do you think he might might do? He's got a lot of choice there uh, on Tuesday night. I think it, it'll be a complete different 11 on, the, on Tuesday night. Complete. If he hasn't got on the squad, the likes of NC, so Webster, Lamptey, uh, Ego, and Arley, Sarmiento, if we can't pick a, a 11 players to beat Crawley, well, it, it, it's down to the attitude of the players, because the, the quality's there. Warren, it's been an absolute pleasure. Well done. <laughs> Early finish for you on a Saturday. Um, great stuff. Thank you for your time today. Big win against United. Two wins out of two in the league. And we'll talk again on Tuesday night. Uh, Crawley Town, the visitors to the Amex in the League Cup. Warren, thank you very much indeed for your time today. Cheers, Tim. I hope we can stay top of the league, but Man City might get an that for so <laughs> Can you sing it for us once more? Second. Can you just sing it once more? We're top of the league. We're top of the league. We are Brighton, we're top of the league.